is what it is. All right, let's get this going. Yo, sneak this podcast, episode 207. George is still sick, obviously. Hopefully, he's back next week. Maybe. Who knows? I uh, got the homie Curtis, you know, on the line. What up? What's up, man? I didn't want to say your full name, you know, I just don't know, you know. No, 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 no. You know, I mean, y'all might know him as Dynasty TV on uh, Instagram, and, and, you know, he has his own YouTube channel, you know. That's actually, actually, I don't even know if I had found you first on YouTube or IG, because I did go through a, a phase, like, right before, actually, like, top of the year. I was planning on getting getting dreads. So I have been doing all this research on uh, right, YouTube, right. you know, watching cats, you know, beginner twists and, you know, seeing like <laughs> the correct lengths when you could start locking it and twist and cats, you know, right. using using like uh, beeswax versus, you know, other stuff. And I was like, man, you know, like I had it all grown out, but I, I think I had reached a point. I think I told you I had reached a point to where I think. Just being my age, my hair wouldn't grow past a certain length anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you did tell me that. I don't know if it was YouTube. It might have been Instagram because I know I found y'all through Instagram. Somebody had shared one of the podcasts. And I was like, oh, man, this is dope. So uh, I followed you on Instagram. And then I think it kind of took off from there. Yeah, I think it was something like that because then I started watching the videos and I was like, man, these videos ain't for me because your locks were long. And I, was, oh. <laughs> and I was like, man, he's too far advanced. I got to go back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a part of the journey, though. I mean, like we talked about, if you feel like, you know, it's too late, then just <laughs> don't well, even try. I'm going to tell you this. I've had a rough week. Uh, like, I actually, you know, I, I officially have lost my hairline. So I cut it all off. Though. <laughs> like, I, you, you scalped I, it? Uh, you're pretty much. I got my hat off right now for the camera, so when you watch it on oh. YouTube, just, I had no choice. You know what's funny is, is that when I was growing it out to lock it, and then I got to a certain point, um, you know, which is crazy, because even I was talking to the homie tapes, you know, everybody, you know, obviously buying more and more hats. You know, I had to buy like a seven and a half right now because I had so much hair on my head. And right. once I started realizing, I was like, you know what? I don't think my hair is growing. You know what it was? My hair was still growing, but it wasn't growing at the same length in every area. Like <laughs> in that middle part, you know, where the swirl is at the top. Right. It, it right. Was, it was low. It was low and thin. It looked old. So I was like, ah, oh, shoot. I'm going to have to have to have some cats add some hair to it or something. I was like, I ain't trying to be out here looking crazy, but. Um, you know, so I was like, I cut it off and I was like, you know, just go back to, you know, waving it up, you know, have it the way it's hitting off and stuff, or maybe, you know, just curl it up. Like my, my hair is naturally curly. So, but I've had it uh, kind of wave and wearing the do-rag and stuff. And you don't know your hairline is officially gone until you brush your hair backwards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got the brush. I got this hard bristle. I brushed it backwards. Gone. Uh, like Count Dracula. Oh. Like here right now, so and, and you know what's whack? You know what's whack is I told my wife because I cut my I cut my beard off because I even cut the beard off, started over, cut the hair hair off, everything, and you know everybody in the house is like, oh my god, you look so weird. I'm like, relax. Hey, you out I, here looking like 17 again? <laughs> you know what's funny? I look older when I cut my stuff off. Not like a grandpa. For real? I do. I don't look. I don't. I look younger when I got a lot like a beard on my face. Uh, if I got, man, I shave my beard. I look like I'm 16 again, man. I remember one time when we was in high school, I accidentally shaved my beard off. I had a beard since, like, eighth grade. So, like, I remember I accidentally shaved it off in, like, I think it was, like, sophomore year. That was a, one of the worst few weeks of my life. You know, getting bagged on all day, though. <laughs> Ain't no worse than getting bagged on all day. And, uh, but, no, it was crazy because I told my wife, I said, you know what, that's it. I said, I got, you know, Jason Statham hair now. I said, like, my hair is gone. I was like, <laughs> it's gone. And she was like, oh, I don't care. You know, like, you wives, you marry, you know. She's like, yeah. oh, I need to lose weight. And I'm like, man, you perfect, man. I ain't tripping off that. I'm like, man, I just lost my hair today. <laughs> I was like, yeah. and she was like, and <laughs> I said, your thing is important. Yeah, and I said, yeah, I said, you know, I could do things to get it back. I said, Curtis told me about some vitamins and stuff that might help. But I said, I could go pay for it to get back. I could pay for it to get back. And she was like, oh, shoot, if you want to go pay for it, go pay for it. I was like, yo, what you trying to say? Like, <laughs> you get sensitive. So you notice it too? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, you know, you get sensitive when when the wife agrees with you. You you start saying stuff. You know, man, I'm getting a little fat. Yeah, you looking a little. Yo, relax. You know. Look, look. You know, I'm on the Peloton now, right? So I know. I the other day, I was like, you know, am I am I getting a little big? You know, this shirt, you know, large used to fit me a little different. Well, you could you lose a few pounds, bro. I went down there. I, I was on the bike for like an hour and a half straight. I don't like that. It do something to you, men. Look, I don't care how tough we could be. When your wife or your girl, it just take a little, a little slight dig. Boy, it make you feel a certain way. Yeah. Uh, but Mel, we talked about the Peloton too, because she was like, "Oh, let's look it up. See how much it costs." And I said, "Yeah, Curtis sent me a code to do it." Because I was like, "Man, where will we put it at?" And I guess we would put it in the bedroom. I just, you know, I remember growing up, my mom and them always would buy, like, the bikes and the treadmills and stuff, and they always had it in their bedroom, and I hated that. But I think I might have to. I think that's what's going to be the next move. I'm telling you, man. It's, it's, I lost, uh, what, 15 pounds in about two months. Oh, and yeah. that's, still, that's still eating crazy. You know what I mean? No diets, no nothing. I was trying to say, because on your Instagram and stuff, you be posting some... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I actually, I can't think of you ever posting anything I thought was healthy. All right. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> it'd, be the, it'd be the finest cuts of meats in the skillet with the herbs and the butter. I'm like, yo, what is this guy, this guy be riding his bike all day? <laughs> He's eating, eating, eating the finest cuts of, of meat, the pork chops and stuff. I'm like, yo, this guy and, is crazy. And look, it, it, it was, I was pretty much doing it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it just to maintain. So what I did starting, uh, what was it, yesterday, I'm on a no red meat diet, just, you know, chicken, be- uh, not beef, chicken, fish, turkey, and I'm going to see what I can do, man. I, I want to try the red meat because I really don't eat a lot of red meat. I thought I did. A long time ago, I had tried to stop it, and it was during that period. It was like the wrong period to try to stop it, like during the summertime actually you know what it's hard to, to stop eating red meat during the summer because you, you know you want to you know you got barbecue you want to do stuff like that and then even the winter time for me like i feel like the winter time is when like you know you got christmas and you got stuff and somebody might you know hook up some steaks or you might just go to fancy dinners but i think it might be a little easy this time well what is winter for arizona i mean is it always summer there i mean what's <sighs> It doesn't get cold. Like it used to be tradition where it actually got cold on Halloween night. It was always that way, but it hasn't been cold on Halloween night for probably about three, four years. So like it doesn't get cold, cold. We get freezing warnings around mid January, and that's like cover up your plants because they might freeze and die. Turn your water holes mm-hmm. off. You know that stuff. I mean, you get snow where you're at, so you know about all that. But right, you right. know, and that lasts about two weeks three weeks and then it's like this block of like the most perfect weather ever i mean it's just window down you get an occasional few dust storms here and there but i mean it's just perfect and then it just gets blazing like around easter time and then that's it it's all down <laughs> today i think it was one i think 113 today so that's um, ridiculous man it really is. Well, you know what sucks about out here is that when it rains, because you always post like how it rains like every single day in VA. Like yeah, it rained. It rained today for about thirty five minutes. Dude, I love the rain. Like that area where you're at. Like when I interned out in DC and stuff, I spent a lot of time in Arlington and all that area, the DMV. Man, I just yeah. love the trees and I love the clouds. I love like that Washington's Oregon area. I love all of that. And. All right. Out here, if it rains, like yesterday, it rained a little bit. Like, you know, little like you said, like little 30-minute little thing, little hard sprinkle, you know, cloudy all day. But it doesn't matter because you go outside, it's 108. Like, that was the one thing I've always hated. It's like I'm sweating and I'm soaking wet from the rain. It's it's 108 outside. There's no sun, but I have the AC blasting because it's it's hot, you know. So it's not yeah, really that's, humid. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's not it's not a humid state, you know. It's the sun burning your skin. It's not like washing. It's not like where you're at. Out there it gets humid. Yeah, and there's a difference cuz I was stationed when I was in the military. I was stationed out in El Paso, Texas, which is pretty much like the desert. Yeah. And um it's just different. Like I would come home, you know, as soon as I get off the airplane, I mean, I can't even breathe when I when I touch in Virginia. It's just way different. The air yeah. is just thick. Yeah, that's the one thing I had a hard time getting used to when I was out there was, like, that thick air where it was, like, 
I mean, I was sweating through suits, like through the shirt, <laughs> undershirt, through the suit jacket. And you had to give up. You know, one thing I had to learn when I was out there doing work was trying to not be sweaty and and sticky and stuff was a waste of time. Like, because everybody oh, yeah. else was sticky and hot and sweaty. So it really didn't, you know, we was catching a train. We was going up and down Capitol Hill. We was doing a lot of stuff. And it's like, you know what? I give up, you know the next man next to me is just as sweaty and smelly as me, so I give up. Uh, but for everybody who listens to the podcast, I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Um, appreciate everybody who comments. Appreciate all the emails and you know crazy things people have to say to us sometimes. Um, me and Curtis are doing top ten lyricist to us. Yes, sir. Now this was your idea. Yeah. My list is fire. I will tell you this. And now this doesn't mean I don't think they're top lyricists. And, you know, ordering this list, I think I didn't like because it's really hard because I don't want to say anybody is better at it than the other. But on mine, I think I did mine right now for more meaningful, like throughout the years and kind of currently to me. So, like, I don't have Jay-Z or Biggie on my list. Not that they're not top Oh, your list is trash. No! No, your list is trash. You see? You see? You already started off wrong. Because this isn't to say they're not top lyricists. I'm talking about when I listen to Jay-Z music, I think Jay-Z music is just, I mean, just superb music. It's just fire music. But I've never listened to Jay-Z music and, like, really felt like a vivid picture of something. Not like Nas. I got Nas on my list. Okay, yeah, your list is stressed. So you're telling me <gasps> they're Nas, you can visualize Nas lyrics more than Jay-Z. That's what you're telling me. I can. Oh, my and, God. And there was one song that did it for me, and I can't think about it, what it's called, but it was on Stillmatic. And it was when he, he, he rapped about, I think it was a bank robbery or something, and he started from okay. the end to the beginning. Right, like, right, right, right. How the bullet went back into the gun and did it, did it. Oh, right, right, man, that just did something to me. Like, it's something about Nas that painted a picture for me. Biggie, Biggie, I mean, was just a, a, a lyrical master. But, I mean, I was a West Coast kid, and I loved East Coast music, but it didn't... Okay. I couldn't relate to it like a lot of other people could. You know what I mean? I understand that. I understand that. So is your list top 10 lyricists out right now, or is this an all-time top 10 lyricists i don't know that's what i asked you because i don't want this to think like so like I, i'll tell you this mine is the mixture of people who still and still rap now is is questionable like jay-z still raps now i mean he just came out with something right. with, with jay electronica so like but i consider them on like god level legendary status but okay. i also consider little wayne that Lil wayne that but i didn't put Lil wayne in my 10 he's in my honorable mentions Greg, this doesn't no. This doesn't see. That's not what this means. That's why. That's Greg, why I like what? doing these lists. That's why I like doing these lists. I like doing. What is these going lists. on, bro? Yeah, but I, but see, that's what I'm saying. That's why I like doing these lists because Lil Wayne, oh, man, I'm talking mixtapes, superb. Yes. Okay, I mean superb. All right, but yes, no, no ceilings alone oh, should course. put him in your top ten. Um, uh, no ceilings alone will put him at number two greatest mixtape artist of all time. All right, to <laughs> me. Okay, right. okay, yeah, exactly. But it doesn't. It didn't move me like other people move me. Uh, you know what? This is a to me list. You know what? That's fine. That's to you. It's trash, <laughs> but it's to you. It can't be trash. It seems, it's trash. I, I think you'll be surprised at some of mine. Uh, well, let me let me ask you this: Do you have anybody from Wu Tang on your list? No. Okay. Now you wilding out. See that? Now you wilding no. out. You don't got one Wu member. No. But you know why? Oh, it's the same thing. You're a little bit older than me, not by a lot, but you're a little bit older than me. It's a so lot. when it comes to New York rap, I, I, uh, Wu Tang, it was okay. You know the hits that would come on the radio. I just wasn't. It didn't move me, like like you said. Earlier. Exactly. But see, that's how Wu Tang was out here to the to the East Coast. When I got big on Wu, I mean on the West Coast, I got big on Wu Tang. I lived in the Bay Area. You you had to like really open your mind to listen to like Wu forever. Like you had to like, all right, you know what? 
The video was dope with the killer bees and stuff. I'm going to actually sit down and listen to this music and see what it's about. Stuff that they were talking about, you know, Wu-Tang was very into like the samurais and the swords and the kung fu and ah ha ha. They were, they were, yeah. Right, and, and the Shaolin and, you know, I didn't understand stuff like that. I was from the West Coast. I understood, you know, the hood, <laughs> shooting, crip walking, you know, the sun come up, Ron low, chilling with your girl. I knew stuff like that, but also was huge Jay-Z and everybody else fans. So, and I listened to more East Coast music than I did West Coast music. I was never a huge Pac fan. Love Pac music, but I love Pac more for him. The music was the music. You know what I mean? I I will always right, prefer right. Snoop. West Coast wise, I will always prefer Snoop and Ice Cube over anybody else in E40 over anybody else from the West. Like I just will. You know what I mean? So I'll say this. Pocket Pac isn't on my list just because Pac obviously he wasn't a lyricist. Now if we did a top ten rapper all time list, he's on there. But different. as far as a lyricist, no. Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, they would be on my list. Lil Wayne, to me, is still one of the greatest rappers alive. Like, they would be on my list. But lyricist? I don't know, man. Jay-Z, bars, lyrics. But, like, I never listened to his music and thought, like, ooh, like, mm. like I never There's no way you can have a top ten lyricist list and not have Jay-Z on there. I'm sorry. Is he at least honorable mention? Uh, no, because he's God status. Uh, <sighs> so he's he's so big, you don't even put him on the list. Yeah, like, that I don't... Make, that makes no sense. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense because I got Nas on here, and I view Nas as God status as well, but I don't know, man. See, your <laughs> list might be cliche, man. Your list might be something that, like, everybody would No, have. no, 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 no. I got some, some people on this list. You're going to be like, what, what, what? And then I'm going to tell you why. Okay, good. And then you could, and you can like either that. say, "Oh, okay," or you can say, "My list is trash." We'll see. All right, cool. I like that. Then, all right. So, like we always do the podcast, you got any pickups? Anything this week? Anything you sold? Looking to cop? Anything, Curtis? All right. So let's see. Pickups. I picked up a couple of um, Comme des Garcons shirts. Mm. You motivated me on a couple of. Wait, where uh, you buying like from? Two weeks ago. Bodega. Okay. Will they on sale? Nah, I wish. Okay. Need supply, have them on sale. How much? Uh, seventy five. Wow! You didn't text me with the. I, I, you know, I didn't think much of it. Like I was like, oh shoot! Like I, I used to think much. You of hit it, me up I... on everything. You hit me up on socks, <laughs> shoelaces. Yeah, but you didn't say nothing to me about the about the shirts. I didn't know. I be sending Man. so many things to certain people. I, I had no idea. All right, so I picked up a couple of them. I picked up um, the Jordan 11 IEs. What'd you think of them? Look, so they came in yesterday. I opened them up out the box, and I was like, man, these suck. Yeah, but, everybody's saying that. But, 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 I put them on my feet, and I kind of looked at them at an angle. I tried to visualize a fit, <laughs> and I'm going to keep them. I'm not going to send them back. <laughs> yeah, see, the homie that worked for StockX, shout out to him. I'm not going to say his name because StockX is very sensitive towards this podcast. Um, he sent a picture of him and he said, these are trash in hand. <laughs> now, I have never seen a bad picture of him. I see him in right. a picture. I'm like, God dang, these joints are fire. But what makes them trash in hand? Is it too much elephant? It's the material. It's... um. It might be too much elephant. Like looking down at it, like holding them in your hand, looking at them, it just seems like it's the elephant goes too high. I don't, I don't really know how to describe it, Mm. but it's just, it feels like, it just feels, it just feels like trash. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It just doesn't feel. I will say the black leather part or whatever doesn't look too quality. No, 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 that's trash. Okay. But you know what's, what I like about them is it's breathable. It's got the mesh in the bottom. Uh, so it's that. it's a good summer shoe. I'm going to throw them on and see. I feel like the only two colors that should ever be in that model are the original Zen Gray and the original All Black with the red. I, I never cared for any of the other colorways in that model. I thought the Concord one was okay. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to say that 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 one's pretty good. That one's I would say right. that. Yeah, I was cool with that. And it's crazy. I was talking to my homeboy because he um, he had bought them too, and I was like, you know, these might be wearable more than the threes. Obviously, this is before I had them in hand. There's <laughs> no way I'm going in my my closet and I'm picking these 
over the three. There's no way. <laughs> I gotta see what you do with them. If you if you actually wear them, I gotta see what you do with them. I'm gonna wear them. I just gotta you know <laughs> figure out a fit because I mean I gotta. It's it's gonna be hard because they suck that bad. I mean the fit got to be fire to make these. Oh, you gotta send them back. To half me, a you gotta send them back. Uh, <sighs> see, you know. one of them cats. Uh, you you on you. FYI, you are on one of me and George's list of cat to cop everything. Uh, you have everything. Uh, I don't. I don't. Everything. Yeah, you do. Nah. If I you don't. could just, if you could listen to the podcast and just whip out patchwork, uh, floor scrap vans just like that, <laughs> you have everything. <laughs> Not many people could just whip those vans out. Like there's only, I only know three people with them, and two of them are considered high, high people in the sneaker community. Like that's how rare those are. I've never even seen them in person. Like probably never but will. You know what it is? I saw two J's. Yeah, I don't he's even know, one of I them. I think it was two J's. I think it was two J's wife. She posted a picture of them a couple years ago, and I seen them, and I was like, "Man, what are these?" George I did my research. I found them on StockX. Yeah, I just had to have them, man. Were they high then on StockX, or were they lower now? Um, that how much are they going sense. for now? I wore an eleven. I paid um, over three hundred. Oh my god. I could never for vans i could never i can't okay, do so it okay let me ask you this i'm not talking about a pair of old school black and white vans a pair of, <laughs> you, might, you might wear these once or twice a year you wouldn't pay 300 they're are they not fire oh fire is understatement them joints are supreme fire but 300 for vans i think it's the like amount of sneaker i need i think i need a a threshold of a certain amount of sneaker for me to qualify the cost of it it's just like a dunk like it's like kentucky syracuse them i cannot pay 300 i can't i refuse i'll pay 280 i might even pay 299.99 i will never touch 300 on a dunk (laughs) never you'll never prepare then because they're not going down you're right, and I'm foolish because I could have got most of them for like two fifty, two eighty, but I was like, nah, nah. And now look at no, these. I got one dunk. I mean, the only ones I got this year, Syracuse, which you, I think you got right. Yep. And I picked up the plum. Don't you got Kentucky? And... No. Oh, I thought you had Kentuckys. No, no, yeah. and the prices are so crazy now. I'm like, well, you know, it's not worth it for a blue and white sneaker. Oh, so that's what it is with you. What's a way, wait, wait. Okay, so you wouldn't pay the three something for a blue and white dunk, but a three something for a multi-color, multi-color dunk you would? Absolutely. I'm still going to get Biotech before the year is over. And I still want Brazils, even though that's, you know, green and yellow, but. Oh, come on, Curtis. Blue and the white. Kentuckys, the Kentuckys just look too plain to me. I don't know. I, I think that about the Kentuckys and I think about the uh the St. John's too. The what George paid for St. John's, which I'm gonna wait for him to get on the podcast to tell about how much he paid. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe George paid it one, two. Let's just put it this way, it was close to four hundred. Like But but that's all George cops though. George no, Rose. no. Dumps. See see, he tries. Like <laughs> he does have a lot of lows and stuff, and out of these new dunks without the padding and stuff. Not new, oh. but like the resurgence of these. He has Syracuse. He has Viotex. He has Plums. You know what? I guess he does have them all. So, you know what? I guess it is fine for him. The thing is with George is George doesn't wear his stuff. Just like that's the thing. He doesn't wear them. I have no problem paying a certain amount of money for sneakers if I know I'm going to wear them. Now, since quarantine and stuff, I have been doing my best whenever I go out to wear as much as I can. But, man, 300 for a dunk. You know what's funny is I would pay three hundred for a SB, but I can't pay three hundred for a regular dunk. Why? Tell me why. I feel like there's something. To, I feel like SB prices, for some odd reason, with the history of SBs, the creativity with the themes, the materials are just insane. Like the the quality, like a De La Soul dunk low, I would pay three hundred for that without even blinking. That's how good it is. That's a three hundred dollar sneaker. Our Syracuse and stuff like that is like you said, it's literally two colors. There's right. no there's no weight to it. It's just it's essentially what it was all the time when we first when they first came out from Journeys, all the little side shops in the mall when we grew up. It wasn't like a 
you know, skate. It wasn't at the skate shop. It wasn't an SB. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Those were just, man, you know how many times are these dunks I've had growing up because it was like, oh shoot, they got these at the little spot for 75 bucks. I'll grab these. And it, it, no, I can't do it. I, I got to have a little weight to my stuff. It has to have some weight to it. I, I can agree with that. And I thought you were going to say the SB highs just because it's more of a shoe. But <sighs> See, I would never wear SB high anymore. Even though with like the resurgence of dunks right now, I haven't put on one SB high yet. So when pigs fly, oh, that's skunks. Different. <laughs> that's different. Those are probably the like, only two. We... <laughs> when pigs fly, skunks, probably cigars again because I should have never sold those the first time. And maybe one other specific dunk high, I might, I would probably, I would I just saw you wear uh, some um, SB highs. Would you wear the Independence Day, 4th of July? Uh, No, I have those, but I didn't wear them recently. I forgot I had them. Oh. You know? I forgot, even though, I even though, wear those. even that was just, that was just a regular Saturday this year. I, I, w- I would have forgot I had them anyways. So, <laughs> uh, what else you got? You got anything else? Um, I've been copping all the hats, honestly, uh, from eBay. <laughs> from eBay, look. Oh man! Hats. So when it comes to what it was a hat club, hat haven, right. you know, all those, I try to get on there. Uh, you know, I got everything ready. I'm using Apple Pay. Sold out. Uh, so what I'm finding myself doing is going back looking on eBay. Now I'm not finding these hats, but I'm just finding right. any hats, period, that look fire with a side patch. Just anything, and I'm, I'm, I'm just copping you know, anything I can at this point. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm, I, I want side patches. On my, did I send you the thing today, Hat Club, doing the pre-order for the watermelons? No. No, not watermelons. For like, it's like uh, the green with the pink bill. Oh, okay, Saturday, this Saturday, pre-orders on any teams of the green with the pink bottom, side patches, everything. I will be do pre-order. they always do pre-orders? No, they, they do pre-orders all the time sometimes, like for other hats, but I'm surprised they went back to do a pre-order for this one. So, and That's I will fire. say, it is. And, and and like, I think you can order as many as you want. So I'm going to probably get like two Dodgers and maybe another team. Like, yeah. Um, and the only issue with them is that like, I think it does take a while. Like, I think someone told me that these, you won't get these till November. So... But I mean, I mean we're not going nowhere. So. Yeah, we ain't we ain't doing nothing. So it really doesn't matter. Plus, this colorway that they already dropped. I mean, they're on eBay right now for one thirty, like one hundred thirty one dollars, like plus. So, um, which is crazy. Yeah, I'm like, not paying. I'm not paying one hundred nothing dollars for a hat. I'm sorry. No, the most I'll doing. pay. Man, I paid eighty five for a hat, and that's from Kill the Hype with the upside down logos and stuff. But right, mm, I don't know if I could do that again. I. <sighs> 80 maybe 75 it has to be special like look i just lost the um a ebay auction for a kill the hype hat it was the the la the green one the guy hmm. wanted what did he want like 80 or something and i was like ah you know 60 we we're going back and forth i think i said 65 next thing i know i got an email the hat, blah, 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 sold for $69. I was like, man. <laughs> that was the only one on eBay. Yeah, there's a, there used to be a little bit more on eBay, but there are so many companies now that like kind of bit their style, which, you know, he doesn't own the right to flip a logo upside down. Honestly, I don't know how any of these companies can just put a, a professional baseball team logo on a hat and sell it i don't even know how that works like i thought you had to license that out or whatever um yeah but there's a like, new era right uh new era does have a couple upside down logos hat but they only did with like a few teams like bulls like a yankees but these are all just like little side companies that like kill the hype was the first one that i knew about they just flipped it upside down and for some odd reason it was just the coolest thing on earth and i had bought a grip of them and then um now there's like other companies that do it as well. And I see a lot of people buying from the other companies because Kill the Hype does a lot of theirs. You order, make like make to order or whatever. So you got to wait for okay. it, you know, but other companies, they don't. They just like build them. I think it's lesser quality than Kill the Hype possibly. But I don't know. Like, you know, if you don't own the right to something, it's like starting a podcast. It's like, I don't own the right to sneaker podcast. So anybody can do one. Like, you know, I could feel right. a certain way about it, but it really doesn't do anything about it. So um and plus a lot of companies are selling a little cheaper than kill the hype too so which is kind of crazy so uh what are you, oh, so did you cop some hats 
Yeah, I copped. Um, what did I cop? A uh, Oakland A's a snapback, and then I copped a um a Detroit uh, Tigers side patch fitted. Now I told you with me getting locks again, I didn't know what size to get. So I like, I think it was um, <laughs> it might have been either Fanatics or East Bay or somewhere. I bought just a a regular plane on the field LA Dodgers hat just to see. Right. And I'm good. I'm seven and a half. I'm good. And this is with a fro. And so I with feel like. Do you wear hats with locks too? Here and there. Dur- during the ugly stage, you know, oh, okay. you, you got to throw something on because you ain't trying to go out looking crazy. But once you get to a certain length, you know, hats are far and in between. Ain't locks too much work? It is. It is. But you know what it is, though? It's, um, I mean, my wife has sister locks. My son, you know, he has locks. And, what, you know, with the climate and everything going on, I, I feel like, it's important to, you know, go out and just go against that stereotype. Right. You know what I mean? You know what? And, and, and you know, I know I, I said what we kind of want to touch on today, but I kind of want to talk about that a little bit. You know, I, I'm going to bring that up in a little bit, and I want you to touch on that a little bit more. Okay. So okay. once we get through all this, I'm going to talk about that a bit, because it's kind of like how we, you know, I, I, I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up. Um, right. Let me Let me finish with these pickups, though. Go ahead. All right. Um, so and you're going to think it's crazy, but I, I bit the bullet and I bought that Kith Bugs Bunny crew neck. The, the sweater? Uh, with, yeah. Which, which one? The, um, was it the big, big bunny head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big bunny head. Oh, OK. It's not the black one. It's the one that's uh, I guess it's like a navy blue or. Oh, OK. Like that color. Stock X? Yeah. Oh, whew. yeah. Was it a lot. It was, uh, I think it was, a, you know what I compare it to? I look at it like it's not a t-shirt, it's an actual crew neck. So when I think of crew necks or sweaters, I think about right. the price I would pay, I would pay for like a Ralph Lauren, oh, right. you know, sweater like that. Those go for, you know, three ninety five if you get the rugby one or whatever. So that's kind of how I base my my crew necks and my, my sweaters. Yeah, you know what? See, I can do that. Like when I buy a lot of my polo sweaters and stuff like that. I, you know, I immediately start at like around 180, 199 when it comes to sweaters like that. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, no, that that's fine. Then. You know, it's just the, I, I always hate with like certain brands when they go too in your face with something. I feel like I have to be real judicial on how often I wear it because it's like when something like you got Big Bugs Bunny on your chest, you could wear it once a week, but it's so pronounced that like it will seem like you wear it every day. <laughs> right. It's like you buy something. You buy like something super bright yellow. This super bright yellow shirt. You can wear that shirt once a month, but it's so memorable. It'll feel like you wear it every single day. Yeah, yeah. I probably wear it maybe two times. You know, this winter because it gets cold here. So, like we, I think we were talking right. about it earlier in the week. I like the winter time mainly for the clothes. Love like to it. me, that's that's get fresh season. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Like, I mean, you can layer up, and you got the sweater and the the coat, the pea coat over it, and the jeans and the boots, man. A hoodie with like a salvage denim jean jacket, and your jeans, and you, you know, you got your, your chinos just right, and you got a, a beanie tilted. Like that was the best. That's the best time <laughs> out here. It only lasts for so long, so that's why I tell cats out here, I'd be like, man, you come to the polo store out here in the summertime, and you want to look for some winter stuff, man. You come out here, that stuff. They be giving that stuff away. Like the polos, the, the sweaters and coats and stuff out here are so cheap in the summer. I'd be like, yo, you come out here for the summer, cop up and take that stuff back to where you come from. That stuff be cheap. I got I got some stuff in my closet that I bought because it was so cheap. And I'm like, I've never worn it. Never worn it one time. Like these Ralph Lauren vests, like all this stuff. I never worn it. I bought all my polo suits that I wear when I was like, you know, had to wear a lot of suits. I got them for so cheap because wearing a suit out here in Arizona is you, you could risk dying like that's how hot it is <laughs> like wool suits so it's like you know you could get them for that for super cheap you know? that's man, crazy. I, I never bought clothes off StockX yet so and stock is having too much problems right now with shipping and paying people money out so hey, so you know it's crazy i um i bought what did i i just sold um the jordan 4 neon 95s or whatever oh, okay 
I bought them for sale um, a couple months ago, like during quarantine. Right. And then I, I was looking at them. I'm like, man, I'm never going to wear these. So I ended up selling them. So right now I'm in the process of waiting to be paid and verified and all that stuff. Now it's been about a week and a half. It's going to be longer than that. I'll tell you. Like like I said, the home that works there, they're around six to eight weeks paying people. So That's, that's ridiculous. It's going to be a long time. George just told me that somebody that he knows has over 1,300 items that he's already sold. Not dollars he's waiting for. 1,300 items he sold and hasn't been paid once and it's been over a month. So... Who, Sock Jig? Uh, one of his homies. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know. <laughs> He's connected some type of way. Yeah. Uh, did you see the um the SIA, the Fuck Racism pre-orders are open again? Yeah, so he had uh, posted that, like, I guess, like, he didn't realize that their system will only automatically let through 300 sales. And it surpassed that, and he would have to go in there and manually approve additional sales. So he didn't know that. So people were like saying that they bought them, but they the money never came out their account. So he had went back and looked, and so people that had pre-ordered them, he ordered them still. Like the pairs are still being made that everybody ordered, but they didn't pay for them yet. So he put them back up so people could pay for them and they could actually get them. But he said that anybody who didn't pre-order as well could go ahead and pre-order themselves a pair right now as well too. So yeah. That's that's me. That's that's part of my pickups. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what? I, I I I you know a lot of homies been asking. Um, you know, cause I I a lot of homies been copped. You know, and I, I love the shoe. It's an everyday shoe. I mean, it, it's perfect. It fits right. It looks good. It's creative. It's it's black owned. You know, which is always a plus. And uh, you know, he's the homie. You know what I mean? And like, it's it's not one of those homies like you know you got plenty of homies that like do stuff and you like. You support them, even though it's it's nonsense. It's not nonsense. Like it's, it's some good quality stuff. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if you consider yourself like an influencer, but you posting on Instagram with the change in the colors and the laces and the what you have the the chicken and waffles. Yeah, <laughs> the waffles and I'm, butter and them. Yeah. I'm I'm telling you, you influenced a lot of people. I didn't even know what Sia was. I think I was calling it Saya or something like. I didn't even right. know <laughs> what the brand was. Until I seen it, I'm like, oh man, these are fire. Yeah, you know, I, I will say, like, I, you know, we're gonna touch on that a little bit as well about like kind of influencing and stuff like that, if you want to use that word. But, um, but pickups for me, real quick. So I bought, they're called Air Zoom Divisions. I bought them off Nike, they were 90 bucks. And I don't know why I bought them. But, like, it's one of them shoes, like, I don't think any people know they existed. I sent it to one of the homies in Boston, like, yo, what you think about these? And it's one of those shoes that I know I could have waited to go on sale. But, like, you know how, like, sometimes you'd be, like, going through sites and stuff, and it'd just be a shoe that you just, like, dying to try. Like, you just, for some odd reason. Yeah, no, huh? Yeah, I'm looking at them now. These are fire. Yeah, like, it's something about them where I was like, I want to get these. Like, I want to get these and see how they go. So, I got those, but I'm gonna tell you, Curtis. I've had a bad week. Bro. Like, <laughs> I've had a, I've had a bad week when it comes to copping. I lost my hairline. Like, fam, it's been a rough week for me. Though. So all this ASIC stuff I had copped off eBay from like the ASICs America had this big sale. All of it got delivered to somewhere except me. So that's uh... yeah, and I'm talking about a good eight nine items. <laughs> So wow. I got none of those. And you know how that is because it's through an eBay thing, which means you got to go through their resolution center and then they send them something and then they have to respond to it and whatever, whatever. So I basically just got resolutions out on that to see what happens. And what sucks is because like it says it's delivered. You know what I mean? Like, how do you argue? Right. Like, what am I supposed to do now? Yeah. So that happened. And then yesterday hat haven or one of the spots dropped a hat that i've been waiting for like dying for dropped it got on there i mean i was just going so fast and copped it i was like yes bought the wrong <laughs> size i bought whatever the size is under a size eight you know, which is incredibly too big so <laughs> oh, uh, five eights yeah seven five eights so oh, wow. I, I hit him up like yo you know Anyway, you got a seven three four seven, you know seven three eights or seven and a half, whatever. They was like, nah, but we could cancel it for you. I was like, man, 
And they was like, you know, if you cancel, you know, give somebody else the opportunity to get it. And I was like, well, let me, I said, hold on a second. Let me check with the homies to see if anybody has a hat, a head size is big. And I contacted the, all the homies that I know got the biggest heads ever, pause. And none of them was like, <laughs> all of them was like, man, that's way too big. I was like, dang, even for you? So I hit them up, had to cancel oh, you them. Hit up, you hit up tapes? I hit up tapes. I hit up everybody. Tapes was a, a seven and a half. I thought he would have wore almost an eight. I thought George was close to an eight. <laughs> yeah, tapes got locks and everything. I'm surprised. He nah, wore seven and a half. Yeah, he said somewhere like around there. So, um, so then that happened, and then shoot, like I said, lost my hairline. So it's been rough out here for me. But I did <laughs> cop a new bed though. Like I'll tell you this, you know, we had bought we. We had bought like our original bed. We had bought from like Costco, you know, mattress from Costco, you know, good price, whatever. And it was trash. Like it was trash early. And when we were like, all right, that's it. I had enough. I'm like, my body hurts all the time. I don't get a lot of sleep anyways. Like I'm a night person. I'm like a morning and a night person. Like I can get up at 4 a.m. Even if I went to bed at 1 a.m. You know what I mean? Like it wouldn't. I'm I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Yeah, and see, like you said, you are younger than me. It's going to catch up to you. Like, it's catching up to me to where, like, my body just feels shot sometimes. But, like, I feel like I wasn't getting quality sleep. And me and my wife was like, you know what? We've never actually been mattress shopping. It was like, hey, go here. That's a king-size bed. Buy it. It wasn't like a... You remember, like, when we was growing up, like, you would go with your parents or whomever, and, like, you go to the mattress store? I've never... I haven't done that since I was a kid. So we actually went to the mattress store. We walked in and, you know, they hit you with the sales pitch, you know, which is crazy. Hey, how you doing? Oh, man, fill out this. What you looking for? Firmness? Yeah, you know, and I'm just not that person. So, like, we're laying on beds. We're just walking around the showroom, just laying on top of beds. And, man, we bought this one that, like, you know, you push the button and lifts the feet, lifts your neck, you know, moves your back and does all this cool stuff and i was like man but first of all i had no idea beds cost that much money dude. that's how i know we always bought wag mattresses because we always bought mattresses <laughs> we always bought like posture peelic sealy whatever and the mattress would be around like you know i don't know eight hundred dollars or something like that this one was right. like way more than that like <laughs> way more than that so i was like okay cool and it actually got delivered today so like i'm excited to go in there and get it all you know set up but I can't wait to like watch TV on it. We watch TV in bed sometimes, and I always hated watching TV in bed because like it made me feel like a lazy person. One, two, it just you gotta prop yourself up a certain way, and you know, crazy stuff. So buying a new bed, I guess, is a plus. But I have no idea where all my ASIC stuff is. I lost that on a hat. I lost my hairline. It's been a rough week, huh? so I'm I'm glad you were able to cop some stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but the bed, though, the bed got to make up for it. Yeah, I hope so. I, I told my wife I did. I said, I'm ready to be a new person. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Do you go to the chiropractor? Man, I've never, you know what's crazy? I've never been to a chiropractor in my life, and I've never had a massage ever, all right? The only massage I've ever had in my life was maybe from my wife when we were dating and, you know, some girlfriends back in the day. People right. touching me is a weird thing. So... <laughs> But I, I, okay. need, I need to go to the chiropractor, though. I do. Yeah, it'll change your life. I started going maybe two or three months ago, and I was the same way. You, you know, you sleep, you wake up, you get out of bed, you pop your back 17 times, pop right. your knees, your neck. Going to the chiropractor, though, it's taught me how to sleep. I didn't even know I was sleep. You could sleep wrong, but there's a certain yeah. way to sleep. See, somebody had told me about that, like, even getting out. Because, like, you have an SUV, too. Like, and, yeah. you know, I'm, you you know, me and you have talked about it. We're not tall people. <laughs> right. We're not tall people. <laughs> and, like, they were telling me, like, how you could get in and out of your SUV incorrectly. Like, you're not. <laughs> what? It, yeah, because, like, I had bad hips. And they were like, yeah, you're not supposed to, like, slide out of your SUV. You're supposed to, like, turn your feet, turn it to the front, and then get out. You're not supposed to put your your left leg out first, then take your right leg out and turn your body. You're supposed to spin your body towards the door and then step out of it. I don't ever do it, but oh no, yeah, I'm trash at getting out of my 
Yeah, I target. get it. I get in mind and out of mind by any means necessary. So it. Yeah, in in and out. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say, I, I feel like once I got mine, it did do something to my like hips or something like that. But no, nah, I'm definitely gonna go to a chiropractor at some point. George started seeing one. I think it's helped him. But yeah, I, people keep recommending it to me. So it's worth it, man. You should do it. Uh, what we'll come out this week? Did you get access to uh Off White Forest? No. Okay. <laughs> Did you? No. You know what? I used to get access to a lot of stuff. Like not even just like wax stuff. I used to get access to a lot of good stuff way back in the day. But I haven't had access to nothing in a very long time. I'm trying to think. Last thing I had access to, I did get access to the um, what's the name of the the last Air Jordan ones, the blue and white ones that came out around the oh same the, time um, Last Dance was airing. They look like fragments, like whatever they're called. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't get them though. I didn't get what? them because <laughs> I ha- I have fragments, so I oh, didn't get oh, those. Oh, I was oh yeah, like, but uh... of course, yeah, but of course, I got fragments. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have everything, but relax. I got fragments. You, there relax, are not a relax. lot of people. Let me tell you something. You possibly might be one of two people that have those vans and fragments, and the other one is probably two J's. So, <laughs> so th- that combination. Shout out to two J's. Shout out to two J's. That combination alone is rare. Somebody who has patchwork vans and fragment ones. That is not a, a that's a rare combination. Um, uh, I've been doing this for a while, man. As have you. Don't act like you don't got some fire in the closet right now. That's debatable, though. I've sold yeah, more okay. fire than I have. That's why I'll put it. Which, you know, it's one of those things, which I'm going to ask you about that, too, as well. But did you, uh, do you want them? I, I'm not going to do any raffles, so I guess the answer is no. But I will try on sneakers. <sighs> well, sneakers I'm just is lazy. Raffle. Yeah, that's what it is. And I think laziness has brought on spending frivolously <laughs> is, that a, is that a way to put it like being lazy makes three hundred dollars for vans not a big deal to you that's true that's true and i've justified it with like the prices of other sneakers in the past like i tell everybody i say retail to me is 250 okay and i base yeah. that off of phone posits in the past and I say, hey, I paid two fifty for phone posits in the past. Two fifty is two fifty because I'll I'll wear that. So I have no problem paying two fifty for a plum or a dunk or any type of thing that I'm gonna wear. But it's essentially from just being lazy, to tell you the truth. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, the Jordan Eleven, like, so I it sold out on sneakers. The the IE that just came out, right? Sold out on sneakers, and usually when it comes to sneakers. The sneakers app, if if it sells out, I just give up. But I was like, nah, I really want these. I ended up buying off of East Bay. And I regret it now. I should have just gave up <laughs> when I didn't <laughs> win on sneakers. Yeah, so, I, I don't even know how East Bay works with returns. Can you return to East Bay? Yeah, yeah. They it comes with the little paper. It's just like Foot Locker. I guess they all they're merged now. Oh or whatever. Right. Um Yeah, no, when it comes to like yeah, uh, when I I I I put it all on sneakers. Like I do a few raffles here and there, but there are certain places that like I just don't win. Like I I just don't. But the process of like doing a raffle is so easy. It's almost like why not? Like put your name, put your address, put your zip code, check a box, say you agree to the terms, and press submit, and you're done. It's like. Why not do it? You know, you ain't got to get in your car. You ain't got to do nothing. So I have, I haven't done any for these off white for. I mean, you look me. I, I do with Virgil. I just don't even know how I feel, honestly. Do I think these are fire? They are. Right. I think the black ones. If the black ones come out, they're better. But I mean, essentially, it's just oh yeah, a, absolutely. It's just a bread four, really. I mean, with some different tones and materials, but uh i don't know man like it depends like that laziness we've talked about because you know the green and the orange air max ones that are coming out yeah i gotta i gotta have those though. like wait a minute wait a wait a minute have you not said in the past oh i'm done with air max ones i just no see there you go you sound like george george said the same thing to me in text message look 
I'm not. I said I was done with Air Force Ones because I mean with Air Max Ones because it was like, dude, I got so many Air Max Ones. It's not even funny. <laughs> like I have so many Air Max Ones. It's ridiculous. Like, I mean, I'm talking from like OG versions to uh, Hyperfuse versions to engineer mesh versions to leather versions. <laughs> it's too many. So I was like, you know what, man? I'm just kind of done with Air Max Ones right now. But these are fire. <laughs> so you so so you move for these, but the the Amsterdams and the Londons like you those like, weren't oh, that tight. Y'all like those? Wh- which ones are the Cowboys colored ones? The London? I think that's the London one. Those are fire. Those are oh. way more fire. Now don't get don't get me wrong. I I gotta have the green one. The green ones that's coming out at the end of the month. I gotta have those, but those are more fire than those. I'm sorry. And I'm prepared to pay the two fifty for both of these. <laughs> That's how yeah, fire these yeah. are. Like I, yeah, I want are. these. These are I'm gonna wear these. These are fire. And you know what? I could already see these getting really high in price. Like I could see them getting to the three dollar, the three hundred range. Prices on sneakers now are just out of control. Like it's unbelievable out of control. It is, and I mean a lot of the Jordans, obviously from the Last Dance. That's why all those are going up in price. But everything is high now. Is it from that? Like, I understand the ones that he was wearing in The Last Dance and while playing for the Bulls, but some of the prices on just these other ones, I don't get it. Like, I don't see why. I mean, what else could it be? Unless people are just bored and they just want these shorts. That's what it is. Huh? That's what we talked about. I said, I think spending money right now is making people feel good. There's no better feeling than going to the front door right now and packages or hearing the doorbell and a package for you and it's some fresh clothes or some sneakers it makes you feel good right now you don't really got many places to go but it just feels good man like we take we're taking losses on i'm taking losses on hat club and hats very personal like i just i can't i i just can't for the sake of me feel comfortable with losing on a hat like, I feel like hats should be, like, <laughs> unlimited. Now, I am glad they're going to do the pre-order for the green ones because it's like, okay, cool. Like, there's no reason why you can't make more hats. Uh, sneakers? Okay, fine. Uh, fine, whatever. But a hat? Like, man, go to the warehouse, pull out another crate of green hats, and put turn the machines on and let them start sewing. Like, come on. Like, losing Yeah, I think I saw... I was on Hat Club and somebody had posted something like a comment and they actually responded and they were saying something about how they missed out on the hat and they came back and said, you know, we just got to make more hats. So that is dope for them to. Oh, see, I never seen you know, that. Do the- That's good then. Yeah. I like that then. Okay. It, it, see, I like that. If they, if they like, oh, you know, we, we just got to make more, more. Oh, shoot. Cool then. I appreciate that then. Um, what else come out this week? Uh, Zoom Freak 2's come out. You care about Giannis sneakers? Trash. Okay. You think they look better than the first ones? Um, No. I don't think so either. I don't. I saw uh, a picture of him wearing them in the bubble, and they looked okay. But you know why they look okay on him is because he's so big that they look small. Like, there's something about him that, side. like... Right. I do feel bad, like, not liking them a little bit because I feel like if they were a Kobe, we'd love them. Like, I feel like if it was a Kobe, <laughs> oh, they're fire. Yeah, it's just something about – I don't even own any Kyries. None? It's just none. Zero. Mm. Um, From the, his first – from the Kyrie one, I've never bought any. Now, there's some that I want, but when it comes to basketball sneakers, you know, the Kyrie, you know, all the Nike athletes – I'm just not really moving for I haven't moved for a, a Nike basketball sneaker like that, obviously outside of Kobe and LeBron. Right. Um, may, maybe KD. Obviously, KD KD4s KD4. are great. Yeah. Um, I bought the KD 6s. Which one was uh, 6? Like the, the Aunt Pearl. It had the strap. Oh, okay. See, there's been oh, some that are, are, are fire, like other KDs, but like um, – KD, I would say KD is probably one of the like most polarizing collection of sneakers because every single one up to like recently, they changed dramatically. There was a block where it was like the four to five was way different. Yeah, it was run from a low to a high. It just completely changed. Yeah, it didn't stay in that same realm. Kobe's 
Kobe stayed within like a certain low top range for a really long time. Yeah, even well, the nine they had the high top, but even the nine they had the low top version too. So it, yeah. yeah, but uh, you uh, yeah, I I I own a couple of Kyrie's. I own ones. Which ones are? Eh, they I I got ones, twos, threes. I might have a four. I don't know, but I like the fives and I like the six. I think this is the six. We're on six right now, right? Kyrie yeah. six. Yeah, I like the five and the six. I like the five the most out of all of them. I think the five is fire, but I just don't see myself actually throwing. I, I would have to be. I would be wearing them just to wear them. That's the only reason why it happened. Though. Like that's it. Right. It, it wouldn't be for. Yeah, it have to, for me. It have to be the I don't know one or two times out the year where the, the homie hit me up. Hey, we playing basketball at the park. Come out. I throw them on then and actually hooping them. Yeah, I, I'd have to but do something other than like that, that. Nah. Um, what about black and gold twelves? The the twelves, you like those? You love those, and I'm I'm just <laughs> not do. a fan. Like I'm not gonna they're buy not them. bad. They don't suck. Nah, <laughs> they don't suck. Look, after after these Jordan Elevens, I just bought. You know, I'm I'm real <laughs> <laughs> cautious on any Jordan sneaker I buy from here on out. You know what yeah. I, mean? I think I need to do that. I think I just have to buy one and be like, oh, I was tripping. Like, yeah, I was it. really <laughs> close to buying those 11s. Like, I was like, oh, these 11s and these 12s, I'm liking them. And if it wasn't for the homie sending a picture video and it's like he's he's an authenticator, he was like, these are bad in hand. I said, OK, like, I, yep, I'm not getting those. The 12s, I'm still like on the fence. But I think you're right. I think if I bought the 12s and got them. I'd be like, what in the world was I thinking? And then I'd be over that. I'd be done with that. Like That's all I, it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm good right now on wearing my LeBron sevens. I've been wearing those recently. And fire. I'm good with that. You know, they are Me, fire. Media days. Media days. Fire. Nah, them is trash. Man. I just don't get them. Bro. I don't get them. I will tell you this. Fairfax, the black Fairfax ones, I was wrong about those. Those are fire. I thought those were whack too, but I seen somebody in person wearing them. I was like, those are fire. I was like, they look way better. The Christ the King ones, them joints of fire. Media days. Oh my god. I would never I would never like media days. They make it's too opposite. Like it's one thing to make one shoe predominantly yellow and one shoe predominantly purple and switch a few things here and there. But I told you this. Like it went way too deep in the opposite. Like even the thread on one shoe is is different even the gradient is different even the the zoom the the air bubble is different color like it went way it's the opposite. exact opposite shoe i don't like that that's too much huh? it looks you know goofy. what to make you happy you could switch the laces and put the yellow laces with the yellow shoe and then put the, <laughs> the purple laces with the purple shoe they're fire and they you know might what? be i don't want to get ahead of myself but they might be all right uh, don't top take- don't jump out the window. They might be top three. Top LeBron three what? Seven. No, they're not. Top LeBron seven ever created, made, produced. No, sold. no, 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 no. So top wait, okay. Seven, so fire. you're saying you're saying top three that we've been able to purchase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not. Right. I'm not going into the, the hardwood classics. And, oh, okay. you know all the. And you so you think they're better than China's? Ooh, yeah, I do. Oh, you smoking? China, you think, you China's think a fire, but it's okay. Let's go back to the. It's a white and gold shoe. Like, what are, what are we saying? I mean, it's a white and gold shoe, but as far you think they're better than red carpets? No, no, red carpets are probably probably number one in my top ten oh. sneakers of all time that I own. Oh, okay. Are, are are they better than Christmas LeBron sevens? Oh, I just wore them the other day. Um, yeah, they are. <laughs> Oh, what? Christmas LeBron 7s might be top three, top five Christmas shoe of all time. I haven't thrown in the red laces yet, but with the black laces, they're better than those. I haven't thrown the red laces in either. And I don't know if I ever will throw the red laces in them. They kind of <laughs> make them look a little weird. Now, red laces and red carpets, you, if you if you don't got your red laces and the red carpets, you can't call them red carpets to me. I can't I can't find the black laces to my red carpets. I threw, like, <laughs> as soon as they came in, I put in the red laces. You know what's funny is like I just don't even feel like unlacing shoes. So like most of mine just stick with whatever's in. I'm not gonna lie to you. My red carpets don't got red laces in them. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> 
mine got the black in them, so that's what I've been wearing. I'm super trash. I'm telling other people oh, what they can't man. call them. I'm super trash. Uh, Vapor Max 2020s. Uh, it's just a lot going on with those, man. I, do, you any, do you own I don't any need Vapor Maxes? The you only Cactus Vapor Lee Maxes Marcus. I own, I have the OG, the the gray okay. with the red check. Fire. Super and then fire. I, I then I picked up the um the silver bullet version, which is trash. Like I wear them to work out in now, but the oh, only two not bad. They're cool. Yeah, but they're not the they're, they're not the silver bullet though. <laughs> they look like silver bullets till you see somebody wearing silver bullets. <laughs> Did you so you don't have cactus flea markets? No, I don't. Oh, I was like, if this cat say he got cactus flea markets, fragments, and patchworks, out of control. Man. No, no, I want the cactus flea markets, but you know what it is? I saw somebody wear them, and they just look so wrinkled on on the inside of the shoe. What's that called? The medial side? They just look yeah. crazy. You have to wear. You have to pretty much go like half a size down on them because the shoe itself is nothing. Like it's like as thick as three pieces of paper stacked up so like the way you lace them and the way you walk in them they get wrinkled in really weird areas like crinkle but it's a woman it's a woman's shoe right yeah it's a woman's shoe which might be a problem on men as well yeah because i'm a i'm an 11 originally but in women's shoes i get a 12 which is a 10 and a half so like okay. my um my alley may sixes um mm. i got a couple other women's shoes uh, I get a, the 12 and the 10 and a half is perfect, but I'm just weird. Say what? And you Curtis. know how StockX is. Can you hear me? Curtis. Hello? You there? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, you like that for a while. I can hear you now. Oh, what's the last thing you heard? <laughs> uh, you said you had the Alley May 6s and a 12 or something. Okay, yeah. So all the women's shoes I buy in a 12, which is a 10 and a half in men. So like the Alley May 6s, um, the, the, the All-Star Jordan 1, the UNC, the Chicago, whatever those right. are. All those I get in a 12 and they fit me perfect, but I'm just weary to you know get a, a 12 in those and then they fit all crazy. Yeah. Uh, I love those. I I think they're, I think they're dope. But and I really was really high on them when they first came out. But uh, you know, I I'm gonna ask you this: Do you think this is the last run for Vapor Maxes? This Vapor Max Twenty, like I feel like Vapor Max didn't hit off like they thought it was. Virgil already did his run through. That's it. That's See, it. This is the. That's it. And you know what? That's what the thing with Vapor Max is. Is I feel like. The Vapor Maxes that seem to like, I guess, you know, if you don't have any of the OG, like the OG, OG Vapor Maxes, like I have the OG Navy Blues, like if you don't have any of those or the um, the off-white ones or Cactus Flea Market, nobody really cares about Vapor Maxes. Like Vapor Maxes, uh, I love it. Like it's a everyday shoe to me, more than, even more than Ultra Boost, only because Ultra Boost is comfortable to me for like a small block of time i could wear vapor max all day but for some odd reason they didn't hit off see, to me ultra boosts are comfortable if i if you're fresh out of the box ultra boosts are more comfortable for the day but vapor max get more comfortable the more you wear them see I, that, so after that, like maybe 10, that's what 15 it is. wears vapor max are fire yeah maybe that's what it is and because i i do work out in a pair of vapor maxes as well like, I work out in, like, a few pairs. Like, I have a pair of Ultra Boosts, Fly Nets, Vapor Max. Like, I work out in a few things, depending on how I feel. And Ultra Boosts, man, like, like you said, like, uh, when we go to New York, I thought, like, oh, we're Ultra Boosts. You know, this is what's comfortable to wear in New York. Man, my back was killing me, like, my lower back. And then I switched it up to Vapor Max, perfect, all day. Like, it was just something about it was just flawless. So, and I haven't bought any of the new Ultra Boosts yet. Me neither. The last yeah. Ultra Boost I bought was the the Consortium pair. I think you have them too. Yeah, the blue ones. Um, yeah, yeah. And the last ones I bought, I never wear them. Yeah, I wear mine all the time. But I just, I mean, it's kind of like what you're saying. But that thing that you you hit me up on on Twitter, the um, 
the posture corrector whatever oh uh, yeah 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 which is why i did a chiropractor the corrector man. posture strap yeah that thing is amazing man <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wear it every that morning thing is amazing. it does I, I i'm not sure if it's like actually like just amazing when i wear it or if i actually feel like my posture is changing because i do feel like my posture has to do with you know exercising a lot more than i i need to exercise a lot more than i do right now so i think that will like improve it with the strap and i think i'd be good you don't ride the bike with it on no i don't and only okay. because like i mentioned to you it um I can wear it, you know, if I'm sitting at my, my desk at work or whatever, but when it comes to exercise and I feel like it kind of cuts under my arm a little bit. So riding the bike, you know, I like to be free. I like to move yeah. around. <laughs> See, I wear it to the gym. Sometimes I've worn it. Like I wear like it under a hoodie and I'll wear it and it's, it's fine, you know, but I be feeling like I'm doing damage to myself by wearing it. Like I'm not, I feel like I'm not supposed to. So <laughs> right. uh, I like the Vibramax Max 2020. I think it's clean. I don't want to pay the price for it. And I don't, I feel like, like you said, it is a lot going on. Like the colors, they changed the air system a little bit and they got rid of laces. Once you start adding new technology to stuff, you start to lose me. If it originally had laces, it has to keep laces. To me, new technology needs to stick with on new models. Like... I agree with that, like the adapts and all that. Yeah, like if it's like, hey, we're gonna, we want to add something that like, like the trash hippies. Like I like the hippies, and there's like the one model that has the no laces. It has the like lock system. Cool, a uh, lock system should always stay on a pair of trash hippie now. Like I don't want to see a lock system on a Jordan One one day or something stupid. Like you know, you got trash hippies too, right? Yeah, I bought the women's version, so I bought I a twelve. That. And, you know, it came in at 10 and a half. Now, I will say this. I wore them out. And I just went grocery shopping. And I had to go to Lowe's or something. But they're not that comfortable. Really? They're not. They're not. You would think that they are. But it's something about the, the heel. It has like a hard piece at the bottom. The, the whole heel is not, you know, made out of trash material, I guess. Because it has a, a hard plastic part on the, on the back of it. And for some reason... You know, I was out for maybe two, three hours. When I came home, my heel was killing me. See, they look like they're supposed to be, like, super comfortable with that thick sole and stuff like that. I thought it was, like, one of the most comfortable ever or something. Now, unless it's just the version I got, the uh, I think it was the 04 of the first wave that came out, the 04 oh, ones. Okay. Yeah, I see, I see when you had posted it, people be like, yo, you going to try for the, the 002s or 3? I'm like, I, I don't know which is which. <laughs> like... <laughs> there's two lace ones george likes one of the lace ones but i can't tell which one it is I, I think you don't have the one that george likes and but you have the one that like i know other cats like so and i, I thought right. about buying them i feel like those ones are like uh i just want to have them like i just want a pair you know that, um, that's why i bought them i wanted the high top version um, yeah, I, just, I, 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 I like that one better yeah it is it is better it has all the straps and it has a lot going on and you know me, like I, I like shoes that have a lot going on with them. So yeah. I was trying to go for that one, sold out. Then, you know, I'm working my way down. And those were the pair I have is the pair I actually was able to hit on. So, uh, you buying, you like the Eric Emanuel questions? No. <sighs> I don't. No, the only thing I need from Eric Emanuel is maybe a hat and then them, uh, them purple babe shorts. I need all his shorts. Paul. I, I need them all. It. I need them all, but I don't want to pay $108 for shorts. Yeah. I like I could pay I, I and it's not it's not the the price, it's the shorts. Like well, I know I, you're rich. Obviously, you're rich. So okay, yeah. Says quite. the guy with fragments <laughs> and all kind of stuff. It's something about paying for something that like now I I think they're way more higher quality than like a pair of champion shorts, but I need something a little more weight to it to pay a hundred dollars. Like I've, I got, I got some babe shorts. I paid way more than a hundred dollars. You know, I've got other shorts I paid a pretty high price for, but a manual shorts, I just love the print and the colors on them and stuff like that. They got pockets, but like they just essentially are just hoop shorts to me. That's it. I need to know somebody. I need to know somebody personally that has them. And I need them to tell me it's worth it for me to spend that much. See, Rico has quite a few of them. You know, 
And he's always warm, but I've never paid much attention to him. And I was like, what the heck? I had no idea Rico was wearing these all the time. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I would cop them. I don't know. I, I have a feeling I'll cop a pair one day. I tried on StockX. I was like, you know what? Maybe I could finesse a pair on StockX for like 89 with all the shipping and fees, whatever it comes out to. But they're right. way more money on there. They're like 160 170 180 Like, So... Oh, yeah, that's no, crazy. I, I was looking at the Bape ones um, a couple weeks ago. I mean, they're up in the three, four hundreds. I'm not paying that much. No, there's like a Bape shirt that I want right now. It's on Undefeated. I'll I'll probably buy it. I don't know. I mean, I will say that, like, you know, and we've talked about it before. I just, you know what, if I want it, I'm buying it now. Like, <laughs> even though it's something about the quarantine just made me, like, really want and appreciate just life and everything that's going on. Like, sitting around with, like, all these DS sneakers and, like, still trying and, you know, having the, like, you know, I just I'll put it, being blessed. I won't say having, being blessed with the ability to, like, oh, shoot. Uh, they want to hunt it i'll give them a hundred for it you know staring at stuff for like a really long time and being able to do something i'm over that you know what i mean i agree like you know how i mean we we but, work hard man you you deserve to treat yourself here and there you're right and like i've talked to you before like me and my wife like i feel like we're itching to like make like a big purchase for some odd reason we had like people come out to like draw up little blueprints of the closet to like redesign it pool people like we're doing that but like it's just like and you know we want to and then we're kind of like like buying the bed like i said i don't think my, either one of us had any idea beds cost that much money i was like yo like there were some more than the one we bought like there were some beds that were almost ten thousand i was like yo what do you do with a ten thousand dollar bed like there's no way you know but oh yeah that's gotta that's gotta be some of the best sleep you ever had in your life right <laughs> and like and you know what's crazy is those were like super expensive and they were like, yeah, you're not going to like these. And I laid on them. I was like, what? They were made out of some stuff that like, I don't even, it might've been ultra boost beds. I have no idea. <laughs> so, but like They're you said, like, beds. right. But you know what? So I, I kind of want to get into that. So like, you know, it's funny is because like, I, I look at you and you know, a few other homies tapes and like, you know, the homie in Chicago and like, you know, homie potential runway, like a few homies on Instagram that like, I consider like, it's weird that our generation is like the fly dads, like how you dress okay. and stuff. And you know, what's crazy is like when I, I tell people all the time, you've heard me in the podcast, like I talked about like, once you get to like a certain age, it's crazy with like social media, like social media used to be like, you know, flexing is like one thing to flex, but like you rarely run into people who like flex and share. That's what I'll call it. It's like, if I say, yo, Curtis, where you get that shirt from? You tell me where you got the shirt from. Like, you tell me how oh, much absolutely. it costs and where the guy. Like you said, like, we send each other, like, oh, here's the link to this. Yo, this came out. This comes out this week. We send stuff like that to each other, and I like that. Like, you know, and I was telling somebody, and I've talked about it on the show before. I was like, man, it's crazy that, like, you know, we all got, like, multiple kids and, like, you know, it's like when I go on field trips with my kids or anything, you know, school related, school parent teacher conference, I'm always the coolest dad there. Like <laughs> I got right. on, we got on the sneakers, the ripped denim, we got on brands, they don't even know what we wear and the colors and stuff like that. And you know, it's like with you and like I, I, I get inspiration, you know, from when you post stuff, like your fits. And I'm like, yo, I can make that work, you know. And and I feel comfortable with saying that to people. Like a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable with saying that. But like, you know, with you, like the homie Blanc, like a few cats, like I'd be like, Man, that, that was yeah. tight. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out something like that. And you brought up the dread situation, you know. And I think and I'm on the same boat is you right now with like everything going on i am really into like really being you know me you know what i mean yes i know exactly what you mean i think we talked about this before too yeah we did yeah it's just i mean for me we probably live in the same type of community you know it's not many of us in our right. in our neighborhoods communities whatever and, you know, I, I love going against that stereotype. 
I love it. Uh, my, like I said, my wife has sister locks. My son has dreadlocks. My daughter at the end of August is, you know, getting her sister locks. So when you see us, you know, I, we're blessed, we're successful and, you know, right. we, we do good for ourselves. And then, oh man, but they have, they have dreadlocks. So when you see me and I have dreadlocks and my whole family does, and you see me on Instagram, you know, I might listen to some country music or, you know, right. I might, you know, do things that are out of the norm. Hopefully when you see the next man at the grocery store with dreadlocks, you don't automatically put that stereotype on him. I like that because that's how I feel. Like I tell my wife all the time and you know what? I, I used to do certain things for myself, but it really paid off when somebody we ran a complete stranger who I had no idea. So I always tell my wife, I walk like we could ride bikes. We could drive, you know, we walk over to like the park and stuff like that. I walk with the kids and I told my wife, I said, I walk with my kids because I want people in my neighborhood to see a black father walking with his kids religiously playing with them going to the play soccer and i want them to see that and you know i don't want them to, you know what i mean and i remember we went to a school event and this lady comes up to me she goes oh my gosh you're the guy oh my gosh you are such a good dad i see you and your kids always in the grass on the green bay kicking the soccer ball and playing tag and stuff and i told my wife i said see that's what makes me feel good and i said there are times where you know, we all go through it where well, you start to like not question, but you start to like think that like uh, you get so caught up in what you do professionally and everywhere. You start to like kind of tone it down. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. Um, And there are certain things that I've wanted to do that I haven't. But like I told my wife, I said like the tats on the legs and stuff like that. So I'm getting my tats on my legs. I'm doing what I want. I'm sticking. Oh, my God. I'm sticking. So you're super tatted. I'm I'm getting um a whole leg sleeve in October. Yeah, I, I I'm supposed to I'm I'm booked to the end of the month to get mine. So yeah, I mean it's I, I feel you, man. So it's like you know even with like how we dress and stuff, and it's like you know what the way you put it was like I want me if you see me walking through the store with my you know Jays on my jersey my whatever my Mitchell whatever I got on my hat tipped whatever i got on like you know you have a conversation with me you know what i do like for what i do and i think i've told you what i do for a living right yeah 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 so like for what i do you know when people find out i mean it blows their mind like they see me wearing a hat and earrings and you know stuff like that and they just like uh what you do what you know type thing <laughs> right and which is fine you know because it's like yeah you know what and i'll tell you this like that stereotype because with what i do what i do is like really hard to like try to get other people to do and they're under the impression that everybody is a certain way and when i go talk to kids in schools about what i do i always wear what i would wear out i wear my jays i wear you know a polo right. shirt i wear my a jersey i wear my baseball hats i wear whatever and let them know that like you can do this too and still be you you know what i mean Right. And I and love people that don't know what you're do. They're probably confused right now. <laughs> yeah, they are. There's some like, that well, what do. is he talking about? Yeah, which because you know what? I'll tell you this, like I've been I've you know, I would never tell on this podcast. I just wouldn't you know, people No, nah, you shouldn't. You nah, shouldn't. You really shouldn't. That's why I always ask people to when they get on the podcast, you, I don't want to say your last name and stuff. Like it's it's stuff is public record. You know, people ain't stupid. Like, you know, you go to people's Instagram right, and find right. stuff. But it's like, you know what, you got to find it. Now you find it and ask me about it, I'll tell you. But it right. just you know, but I, I do I do like, you know, everything like, you know, like I said, I get inspiration from you, how you dress, what you are with your family, your kids, your wife, stuff like that. It's always having a good time. And I think like with quarantine and stuff like that, everybody is getting is slowly trying to get back to like understanding the basics of just like enjoying life yeah you're right because with with work and like you you mentioned earlier i do the youtube thing it got to a point to where i had to slow down you know with youtube and really just appreciate you know the, the times i had with my daughter with my son and you know coloring and playing with doll houses or getting on you know Fortnite or call of duty right. with my son and enjoying those times because at the end of the day I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way. You know, the money 
that you get from whatever job, YouTube, whatever is fine, but you can never get that time back when your kids are smaller. So the quarantine, honestly, with them not being in school, with them being home all day with, with my work schedule, I work shift work. So um, I'm off for seven straight days, at least once a month. Um, it really gave me the time to just, like you said, realize what's important. Yeah, I, I will say, you know, and, and, you know, we've had, you know, ups and downs, you know, being home with the kids because it can be a lot, man. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you you don't realize, like, I, I will say this with with working from home right now and stuff like that. You're not working from home, right? You still have to go, right? Yeah, I still go. OK, so like with me working from home, I'll tell you, it's like, you know, even when it comes to like sneakers and stuff like that, I start to like understand how important certain things were like driving to work like people don't understand the value of that <laughs> like i used to hate it <laughs> i hated driving to work and i hated driving home and then i realized that was like my little small break of sanity before i came back with my kids and stuff and whatever but like you said you know like my my son and my daughter are like really understanding like sneakers and stuff like that and not that i want that for them but they get their sneakers like they get shoes daddy look what i got you know they want to show me and they they want right. to they want to do a podcast like you know they want to do all this stuff right now which i love and like you said like you can't get that stuff back like you know my son and playing 2k which i hate playing with him in 2k because he only wants to pick the lakers and i'm like fan pick somebody else you know, like <laughs> you i you got to pick like another team that's just as equal to even have a chance you know to beat them you know I'm not gonna lie to you. He right. beat me in it. Though. I've never won a game of two K. So right now, even with my son, he's only seven. I'm zero and four. So <laughs> I'm Yo, the worst, yeah, you're trash. I'm the worst two K NBA two K player of all time. I've never Curtis two K. Whenever the series started, I have never won a game of two K <laughs> in my entire life. I'm not even joking. People think I'm joking. Madden or oh, I'm I, I get busy in Madden and stuff. I have never won a game of NBA 2K. I have no idea what it's like. I pick the Warriors. I pick everybody. I have no idea how to win. So, so, look, um, so you're copying PS5, right? What, Curtis? Don't even do that. We've had conversations. Yes, I am copying okay. two. <laughs> so, so PS5, 2K, Madden, whatever. We got to get on there because I'm terrible at Madden, but I'm fire at 2K. So, <laughs> one way or another, we got to we got to merge the gap. How are you terrible at Madden? I don't think I know. An, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody being bad at Madden. This is the thing. I can score. I can score fifty five points, but the problem is you're going to score seventy eight points because I can't <laughs> stop you. That's the problem. <laughs> I can score just fine. See, that's my problem. I'm, I'm trash at defense. That's my problem with two K. Like I can go down and make some shots, but you can score on me yeah. easily. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, what else did I say we were going to talk about? Oh, you know what? I wanted to ask you too. You know, we were talking about like the prices of sneakers and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of people saying like with dunks and stuff that with, uh, Travis Scott, they feel like Travis Scott had a big part in like the dunk ride and how dunks are back and, you know, so forth and all that. I was going to ask you like, I do want to touch on a little bit too about kind of Kanye a little bit. Um, do you think we'll ever see anybody, because we're doing top 10 lyricists to remind everybody, do you think we'll ever see anybody do what Travis and Kanye has done for sneakers ever again? I or, don't. I, I don't. don't. And, and the, you know what the difference is? Kanye had a huge influence on sneakers when he was on Nike, and then it kind of carried over. So I'm not even going to say the whole because a lot of people say Kanye is big because he has that Kardashian name attached to him. I don't agree with that. Oh, no, no, no. That That's 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 false. When it, yeah, when it comes to sneakers, Kanye is his own entity. You know, he was right. already Kanye. People are always wearing Kanye sneakers. But with Travis, I feel like... I didn't see this <sighs> for Travis. Like, I, I mean, love... to answer your question about the dunks... The dunks that Travis came out with, they weren't even the dunks that everybody's going crazy over. They were SBs. Yeah. Which the so, prices, I mean, it's not like... The prices on them were still high, but, like, prior to his even coming out, him and, you know, again, you want to add Kylie, too, they were wearing dunks, you know, kind of out 
kind of regularly. And now I personally don't feel like it was Travis or whatever that did it, but I ask a lot of people and they really feel that like Travis Scott had the influence on dunks to get them back to where they were. Cause I, I have never seen anything like this with SBs. And I don't know if you have a history of buying any SBs or if you have any in your collection or whatever, but I have, I don't think I would have, I would have never thought this would have happened in a million years ever. Oh no, my, my SB collection is super trash. Um, as far as like, uh, all, everything's recent. So like the, the ones that, you know, rub away, what is it? The LA to Chicago. Right. I have those. I have the, um, the costings, which I paid way too much money for. Right. Well, I don't, um, know, if, I don't know if that's, I don't think you did. <laughs> I don't think you did anymore now. Like everything's so high george is sending me prices on sb dunks because he's selling all his dunks now george has dunks spilling out of everywhere the prices on those are so insane it's not even funny it almost doesn't even seem real like i'm talking dunks that like we could have got for like 45 dollars are selling for a thousand and I'm like, no, this can't That's be real. crazy. It, it can't be real. And I've never seen anything like it. And we talk like with, with Travis and stuff. I never would have thought that. I was talking to Rich Mays. He works for a BR Kicks. And me and him were going back and forth because I said, I said, Travis Scott pretty much runs, has a free run of anything with Nike and Jordan Brand and whatever because, I mean, he's, he's imprinted himself on some of the most iconic silhouettes of all times, the Jordan 1, Jordan 4. I mean, we're still hopefully waiting for the brown pair. And I think I've seen like a Travis 6, is, another Travis 6 is coming out next year. There's a Travis 3 coming out. Uh, I think it's crazy. Yeah. When Kanye was with Nike and he wore the red Independence Days, those shot through the roof. When he wore those flight net trainers, those shot through the roof. When he went with Adidas and was wearing triple white Ultra Boost 1.0, OG shot through the roof. Like, influence like that. And it made me think of that when I was making my list of rappers, of lyricists, because... I don't think anybody could ever do that again. Like nobody. Like no, nah, I don't think so because you have there's rappers now like J Cole with Puma and everything like that. Nobody's moving. J Cole's on my list first and foremost. But <laughs> J, J Cole Puma is like I'm not moving <laughs> for J Cole Pumas. You know Did what I mean? You move for a J Cole Nike though. Um. That's what I don't know. You know what? You know what? You might be right. You might, I might be brand biased. Well, do you have any? You have Cortez's, right? I've seen you wear Cortez's before, right? Yeah, yeah. I got do you uh, have any, Do you have any Kendrick Cortez's? No. I find that Kendrick starting out on Reebok, and then did make his way to Nike, and he came out with some Cortez's, and there was one other Kendrick shoe that came out. For Nike, I can't remember what it was. It was like really, you know, 50 50 on people whether they thought it was fire or not. I don't remember what it was. Not a 720. I don't know what it was. It was a Kendrick Nike sneaker. And I don't even think Kendrick has made an influence or impact like any other people, like Kanye or Travis Scott or anybody. And I don't think there's anybody set up in the future to do so. No. Nah. I agree. I, I don't see anybody that can do that. Um, even the, the hot artists that are out now, you know, like the little babies and all of them, all I, right. I can't see them signing with a brand and then having that big of influence. And I think it has more to do with the personality. Travis Scott in itself, you know, he, he kind of seems weird, kind of quiet to himself. Right. But when you see the video, I've never been to one of his concerts, but when you see yeah. the videos of his concerts, he has the roller coaster going through the audience. And yeah, I watched the Netflix I thing. Mean, I was like, that was crazy. Yeah, he's a rock star. And I feel like, I feel like, I mean, kind of, I mean, Kendrick is on, I mean, uh, Travis is on my list of like, I'm not a super huge con concert person, but there are two people that I do want to see in concert, and it's Travis, and I want to see Bruno Mars in concert for some reason. I feel like he put on a good show. Well, yeah, because I mean, he has like a million hits. I mean, right. <laughs> you'd have a good time. <laughs> um, but nah, like, yeah, I feel like we're in a stage right now to where, man, we're, we're really fighting for sneakers and the influence of other people is crazy. Like, you know, you had brought up influence earlier, you know, it, and you had said, like, you know, I kind of like influence others to, to take a look at, you know, someone America brand. 
And you know what? I think we've all, I think with us, like, there are certain groups of people who have, like, like, are, are adults. There we're adults on social media. Like, we're actual adults to where you, I have no, like we said, like, I can message, like, I talk to tons of people about hats. And they say, oh, my God, where do you get that hat from? Oh, yeah, I got it from here. And I remember, like, growing up when we would dress up, we'd be flying school and stuff like that. Man, well, I would never tell anybody where I got my stuff from. Huh? Somebody would be like, exactly. yo, where, where you get that shirt from? Yeah, you know, I got it from New York. would be lying. I'm a, I live <laughs> I live, I live all the way in 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 in, in the Bay Area, and okay, yo, where you get them overalls from? You know, a little something from New York, some little light, you know. Had them shipped over from Japan, you know, be lying, and they really got them. Really got at the mall. They just didn't know how to shop, you know. Um, right. But I will say, like, you know, like you, like I am influenced by you. Like I have no problem saying that, and and it's and it's like brotherhood, like influence, like oh shoot, man, the, the homie Curtis wore. The, the the jersey under the the jean jacket shoot i could do that too you know what i mean yeah that's love man it's it's crazy because what what's the point of not telling people where you got it from what do you want to keep it for yourself for the likes like you don't want them to get the couple likes too off the pick like what's the point oh that's exactly what it is i know that's what people do it huh? people won't even respond to you You'd be like yo that shirt yo where you get that shirt from they won't even say nothing back to you yeah that's wild and, and uh, that's one of you and my other homie, like, I respect y'all so much because you'll hit me up on, you know, stuff that I don't even, wasn't even on my radar. Oh, um, Hat Club is coming out with these hats on Thursday at 2 p.m., blah, blah, blah. Like, I wasn't even thinking about that. You hitting me up. Like, I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, wanna, I, I definitely like to make sure that, like, I try to let people, any, anybody know of anything you know, that I, I'm interested in. Like, I have no idea whether if anybody wants it or not, but, like, I would hate for somebody to be able to miss out on it if, if they, they might like it. Yeah. Uh, What else did I say we were going to talk about? Uh, what else we got on here? Um, no, no. Jordan 5s? What the? Oh, you see those? I seen them. Um, you like so Jordan here's fives? the thing with me. The thing with me with 5s, I have two pair. I have okay. the Supreme Fives and then the Metallic Fives. Which Supreme? Uh, the Camo. Okay, fire. Um, I still want the Off White Fives, but the prices right now are crazy. Yeah. What are they at right now? Uh, for my size, I think I saw eight hundred. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> I thought yeah, they were like, right. I thought they were maybe still around, maybe like six thirty, maybe. Yeah, it's. Hold on real quick. I'm about to... My AirPods are dying. Hold on. I'm about to switch. Oh, yeah. All right. Can you hear me? Uh, Hello? Do I sound crazy? No, you sound fine. Okay. So, for me, I feel like when it comes to Jordan retros in general, you only really need, like, what, maybe three to four colorways? Anything over that is kind of like... Uh, it's overkill. That's just how I feel. I, that's just to me. So how many ones you got? Ones? Yeah. Okay. Anything <laughs> other than the Jordan 1, I feel like I got like 40 pairs of ones. How many? Over 40. Oh, man. Uh, nah, Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're looking around right now, right? <laughs> uh, no, I think I maybe only have maybe 20. Okay. Something like that. Not as many as you. That you have way too many. I don't believe you. <laughs> no, maybe twenty. There's other Jordan models that I I, ha I know I have too many of. Like I got, I got too many fourteens. I have. You know what? Maybe I do got more Jordan ones than I thought. I don't know. Exactly. I know you do. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, you got at least at least in the thirties at least. It, no, I think it's I think it's twenty. I think twenty is safe. Like. I mean, I sold a, a few like my doubles and stuff like that. Like, like I when I got back onto the like the you know what the stuff just looking at me doubles is what I've been really getting rid of. Like, I don't need two of something. One it was because we're always in that mindset of like, oh, I need one to wear, and just in case I mess it up, I'll have another pair. But I haven't messed up a pair of sneakers that I didn't intentionally want to mess up in probably a decade. Like, when's the last time you actually messed up a sneaker? Like that, not. I mean, intentionally is one thing, but like you just wear a sneaker so much where it got messed up. Like we're walking. I'm not running. 
I ain't chasing nobody. I ain't fighting. I ain't doing nothing in it to like really mess it up. I think the last pair might have been Aqua 8s back in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have been the last pair that I just trashed. And I mean, I was in the military, so I was wearing them for PT. You know what I mean? What? I, you know, I wanted to ask you this too, which I never, and I want to make sure people are clear on this. Anybody I've talked to in this podcast that I've talked to before, I don't ever, ever ask them like, yo, so... What got you into sneakers? But I do want to ask you that only because, you know, you had a military background and stuff like that. Like, are you always into sneakers or did it start in the military or? So for me, back when I was in like elementary school, like third, nah, like fourth, fifth grade, that's when the like the Jordan 12s originally, you know, came out. Right. Um, and before that, I think maybe like Little League, I, I think I had the playoff eights. That was my first pair that I can remember. But, you know, middle, I mean, uh, elementary school, when the when I saw the Cherry 12s, when I saw the playoff 12s, I fell in love right away. So from then, I kind of had the love for sneakers, but I would only get m- one, maybe two, you know, a year, a school year. Right. Um, so what happened was join the military, you know, I, you know, classic story, you know, making your own money. You can afford sneakers. Right. Uh, around 2008, that's when like the playoffs and the aquas and all them came out. I deployed uh, in 2009 and my wife, you know, Space Jams wasn't even on my radar. She was at the mall one day and the guy at Champs was like, hey, you know, we're doing, um, you know, you pay for them now. We'll give you the receipt. You can come pick up the Space Jams. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. So she actually picked up the Space Jams for me. And I think that following year, like in January, the Cherry 12s dropped again. So while I'm deployed, she's getting me all these shoes. You know, I come home fresh off a 12 year bid, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm opening up these shoes and I fell in love right then. So it's been probably since like 2009, 2010. Were, 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 were other cats in the military big on sneakers? Uh, they were, but not a lot though. It oh. is, is, it was like a community, you know, you might've had, I might've had maybe five or six homeboys that was really into sneakers. And then, you know, back when like, what was it um what shoes released like in 2000 like back when the the white semen threes released without the you know nike check and all that right. when all when all of them were releasing you'd had a couple homeboys that was kind of into it 2010 when the flints had released mm. you know you link up with people you go to the camp outs and you know right. it's, and i seen somebody jump off the second uh, story of a mall to try to you know run the, the foot action line <laughs> And when I tell you, I mean, he was limping, like he jumped, fell. I mean, he had to break something. I mean, he limped into the line. I mean, it was it was crazy. You know what's crazy is like, I hated those times and I loved those times at the same time. Though. Like, that was it's the adrenaline. So, yeah, man. Like, and the adrenaline now is different. Like, it's like, oh, shoot. Like, it hits seven o'clock or whatever time they drop in your region of the country Soon as it hits that on sneakers, you hitting the thing and you clicking your buttons and you're doing all this, selecting your size. It's like this crazy adrenaline. And then like if you lucky enough to get the gotem pick or, you know, win a raffle somewhere, it feels like, man, it feels like a crazy high. But you know what it is now, and I mean it's part of like you were saying, us being blessed and you know, forcing enough. Um, the the story where the guy jumped off the second floor, that was for the love of the game sevens. The Olympics. Oh, love them. If those came out now and I and I missed, I'm not tripping. Like, okay, you know, I didn't hit on sneakers. I'm gonna buy them off Snack X, like well, for two seventy five, two eighty. Like I just right. I, I need them that much. Yeah. And then I'll get them in the mail and be like, okay, yeah, just you know, put them <laughs> away and don't even think about them. I do say that, like, you know, I mean, that's where we have reached was that that point of you know, you miss, I immediately go on something. And we kind of talked about it last week was like, is there still a such thing as a hunt, like on the hunt for sneakers? Because I don't go on, you know, every once in a while I'll go on eBay to look for something old, but like anything recent, like I don't go on like offer up and stuff like that. I go strictly to StockX and GOAT. And honestly, even though, you know, I have sort of a relationship with GOAT, like it's up in the air, like with StockX, it's just easier to go look and see, you know, it's just the easier platform to use to me than, than goats, you know, it is. 
And shout out to Goat. I've bought some stuff off of Goat. I've sold some of my used shoes on Goat um, when I couldn't get up to round two. And unfortunately, you know, round two is closed forever now up in Richmond anyway. But StockX, like you said, it's just easier. Yeah, you know what's crazy with like Goat? I really, when, when all these platforms first came out, I really appreciated like Goat selling used sneakers. But the used sneakers, if you buy them off of there, they're nothing like the pictures. Like, oh, and bro. I've learned that. I've learned that to where people are taking pictures of their sneakers, but they're not, they're still wearing them. Like, because oh, okay. I have bought, I have never bought a pair of used sneakers that were just as good as the pictures. And the last pair I bought off of there were like some Kobe ones or something. And it was used. I mean, the pictures, they looked like past Capaz's DS. I get them joints. Them joints were ravished. All right. Like they were, I'm talking beat. And I went back to the pictures to like kind of go back and compare. Nothing like it. And I said, you know, this cat was still doing whatever he wanted in these sneakers. Uh, like, I was like, you know what? I'm not buying used anymore off of there. Like, I'm, I'm just not. Like, I'm I'm over that now. Um, and you, is, I'm not saying I'm holier than thou. Like, I wouldn't do that. But I was always afraid that if they got the pictures at GOAT, I mean, they got my shoes at GOAT and seeing that it didn't look like the picture, they would, you know, kick my stuff back and all this and that. So I was always afraid of that. So I think the only used pair I sold on there was like the um, the Justin Timberlake threes, the Super Bowl ones. Oh, OK. Um, and I had only worn them like maybe once or twice. But when I when I threw them on there, I mean, I was just I was nervous. I was like, you know what? Once I put it on a site to sell, it's not mine no more. I don't even think about it. All right. It's somebody I- else's. Yeah, I've only, I've never, actually, I've sold on Goat a few times, but I, like, have George do it just so he can get, like, the whatever on his accounts, because he sells right. more than I do. Uh, right. StockX, I've sold the most, you know, but, meh. Um, but, no, what was I, oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to ask, like, you know, we were talking about Jordan 5s at first, like, you like those Jordan 5s? <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to try for them, well, you know, I take that back, yeah, I will try for them, just because it's a, it's a what the, and I could right. maybe get some money for it. I have no desire to wear it. Nah, me neither. Um, and I feel like people who wanted the Tokyos back in the day and missed out on them, or maybe the Raging Bulls, like those are the people that are the only ones that are excited for them. You, you don't really like that shoe. You just you missed know, out on those, so that's why you like them. That's, a, that's kind of another thing I have an issue with, that, is, is that people have been waiting for Tokyo 5s for so long, and then when you now you're going to put them on a what the? It's like, man, we haven't even got the retro yet. We got that one time, and now exactly. you're just going to throw it in this mishmash of whatever? Like, I don't know. Um, There's a lot going on with the shoe. I mean, they got the, what, what is it, the e, E-Ball, E-Y-B-L logo on the red side, and then you got, it's just a lot. But you like that, though. No, 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 no. I like the media days. <laughs> <Okay, so laughs> In media day, LeBron seven versus the what the mock ups. I didn't even <laughs> see um, the top three Jordan fives. I thought they were trash. I like them a lot more than I did. I thought they Maybe were purple laces, but other than that, I thought they were OK. I thought the I thought the fours the what the four or whatever I thought that was disrespectful. Oh, I'm so mad I didn't get them. I am too because we could have we could have got them for cheap too, like on sale a bunch of times. Yes, and yes. we should have. And I said that if I could have, I would have because the four the ninety five neon fours that you talk about selling, I, yes. I bought them and I bought them because they were on sale. You know, but I have no idea how to wear them or I have no desire to wear them. Like. I- Right, I looked at them. I'm like, man, you know, these materials are fire. The the um the midsole is suede, and then yeah. I looked. Um, I didn't even put on my feet. I looked at them. I'm like, okay, maybe I could throw these on like an all black Nike Tech Fit. You know, in the winter time, yeah. Maybe have the flash on. You know, get the three M <laughs> popping. <laughs> you know what? Because like I I I was like, and we talked about this a super long time ago about sneakers looking like other sneakers. I was really trying to make the argument of why would I have 95 neons and volts 
OGs. Like, why would right. I put this one on and not this one? Like, this right. is this is the one that matters out of the two. Why? Right. <laughs> why would I put on something that looks like it? Like, ooh. And that's exactly why tomorrow I'm sending back those 11s because there's no way I'm putting those. <laughs> Over the Jordan three, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, that, that that I think that's like the measuring stick of something is like if you got something that looks like why would I wear a cement IE if I got a cement three? The cement three is the one that matters uh, with the Nike Air on the back. Yeah, like, with the Nike on the back, that's what matters. Uh, man, um, I was gonna ask. Well, you know what? This might be a personal question, so you can answer it or not. If your so, son, if your son wanted to join the military, would you care? Um, and care, I mean, like fight it. Oh man, you know what is crazy? I nobody's ever asked me that. Um, and I'm gonna ask you that because, like, I have an older son, and like he, he's 21, and he had tried, like, he had did all the necessary steps to go, like, literally, like, all he needed to do was like sign one last thing and that was it and like me and me and my wife we really talked him out of it and he's really not doing enough that we want him to do and i feel like we were selfish in talking him out of it because he could have it could have really possibly helped him i mean he still could if he wanted to but right. you know and i was like and i we have a lot of people in the fa- that we know personally that are in the military but a lot all of them had like daughters is like really super yeah i just didn't ask him you know but i was like i'll ask curtis like right. would you would you be cool with that so for me i think for me not having you know a father figure around right. and just you know, single household and all that stuff it was kind of like i tried the school thing at first and it just wasn't for me you know what i mean right. and being right. the you know the area that i grew up in it wasn't a lot of opportunities uh, if you didn't have a degree or some type of experience and all that stuff. So the military for me, it really gave me, I guess, like a head start uh, yeah. with, you know, what I wanted to do. Uh, honestly, if it wasn't for my degree or my military background, I probably wouldn't have, you know, got my career job that I have now. So for me, it definitely helped. Uh, I would just say, make sure, like for me, that was the last result. Mm. Uh, you know, I had tried school like multiple times and fi- realized it wasn't for me just to end up going back to school anyway while I was in the military. So I would say exhaust all options. And then if you feel like it's best, definitely go Air Force. <laughs> OK, so what, what branch were you? Army. OK, so that was the thing. So he was going Army and. Uh. Out here is really big Air Force. We're literally, I'm talking three three to five minutes from Luke Air Force Base. Like, it's right there. Okay. Like, we see the jets zooming, all the jets, all that. And we did not, and we were perfectly fine with him going Air Force. Every single person we talked to, we have people, friends that are Marines, Army, Navy. They're all of it. They were like, go to Air Force. They were like, you want him to go Air Force if you want him to do anything. But he did not want to go Air Force. He only wanted to go Army. And, you know, he's he's doing the school thing now and this is probably his third try at it you know college he's it's just not for him you know i know this is for listeners yes i know this is veering off sneakers i know how you guys act when humans start talking about other human topics so bear with us um (laughs) cats boy we talk about a movie they be like fam you really gonna talk about a movie yo we're humans like we can't (laughs) give me a break i'm talking to the homie right now um but you know i i I think that that was our kind of thing with kind of like what you're kind of like going in the direction of is that we tell them all the time. I'm like, man, you have a household with a mother and a father. I'm his stepdad, but I've raised him since he was four. So he, he's Wait, mine. That's a dad to me. Yeah, yeah. He, I'm dad, you know, and um, it's like, man, you're already kind of beating like what they say the statistical odds are. Like you have a mom and a dad at home, one, two, and you have a minority mom and dad at home, like a black and your mom is Mexican. Like yeah. that's you know rare within itself right now so like all these opportunities and options for you it seemed like military was like what like you can we've set ourselves up for you to do anything and i was like and that's what you want to do and it was more scary for us than anything but i don't know i just kind of want to get your opinion on that yeah but i mean real quick i had a friend that you know joined the military he only did three years 
you know, he did his three years. He, um, you know, established some type of, I quote unquote, you know, manhood, self-confidence, whatever you want to call it. And right. now he's doing great. He lives out in Dallas. Um, he's a firefighter. He's doing great for himself. You know, family, house, you know, mm. just bought a house last year. So, I mean, he's doing really good for himself. So, like I said, it's if you can't find the self-motivation, the military is going to make you be self-motivated. There is no coddling. If you go in, I mean, from, from day one until you get out, I mean, you got to be a man. It's, it's no choice. I think that's what, I think that's what we at some point realized. That's what he needed was like discipline. Like you don't have a choice, but to be disciplined. Like right. that's what yeah. I needed. Honestly, that's what I needed. Mm, my wife is going to hear this and she's going to ball her eyes out. <laughs> Like, because she knows it. She knows it. Um, I was going to ask you, too. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the Kanye stuff as of lately. Oh, yeah. Did you see the Dave Chappelle just flew out to him today? Or Oh, yesterday? no, I haven't seen that. Yeah, he flew out to him to, you know, check on him just to go against how the media is, you know, out, uh, you know, going – backlashing against him saying he's crazy and all this and that. So Dave Chappelle actually went out there to check on him versus just, you know, talk, talk crazy about him on Twitter or Instagram, you know, yada, yada, yada. But so how do you feel about that? Like, you know what? I saw an old clip. Um, somebody I follow, I can't remember his name, but he shared an old clip of Dave Chappelle back when Dave Chappelle, you know, he, he quit the Chappelle show, went to Africa. Right. He was saying how is something going on in Hollywood to make him go to Africa or to make Mariah Carey make a hundred million dollars and, you know, take her clothes off on TRL. And there's a lot of stuff going on in Hollywood that we don't know about because we're not privy to it, but these people aren't crazy. Maybe they're just lashing out for help. That's one side of it. The other side, I'm like, bro, you can't, he says things and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, he's smart. But then he goes and says stuff about, you know, Harry Tubman and right. It's it's so weird with him. I just try to I try to look at it like, well, you know, it's Kanye. I, I mean, <laughs> that's all you can say. Yeah, you know, I, I saw like a lot today online. I mean, Kanye has been has been acting like this for quite some time now, and you know, Kanye is one and Kanye is one of those people that like we everyone holds at such a high regard for and i honestly do think that kanye himself thinks he's like transcended the human race but i also think he's one of those people that are you know too smart for their own good if that's the right term like like there are certain people that like i believe have an innate ability and I, i i and not to like talk about myself but like thinking outside of the box all the time like i've succeeded a lot in school and college and stuff like that by thinking dramatically different out of the box than everybody else even for what i do professionally is why i'm really good at what i do and i feel that sometimes that like he's so out of the box like his points to him will always sound different out loud to us and how do you feel about how people like are treating him online, like calling him crazy and stuff like that? I think crazy is I don't really like the term the word crazy. Um just because I mean w- what's crazy? Is 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 him being mentally ill? Is that crazy? Because the stuff that he says, you can't look at him as a sane person. So if you look at him and what he says, you're like, oh man, you know, he's he has a, a mental illness. Like I wouldn't offend someone face to face. Let's say it's not Kanye. Let's say it's uh, my sister. My sister says something crazy. I wouldn't offend her and call her crazy to her face if she has a mental illness. So why do people feel like, oh, just because it's Kanye, just because he's under the limelight and famous, you can call him crazy? I don't agree with that. Is yeah. the stuff he's outrageous 1000 percent. it's outrageous it really is now like i i today i was i felt like it's i've been seeing like a lot of 50 50 like people like oh my gosh like clearly he needs this and that and you know he's help and then i've seen like oh my god this guy is out of control he's crazy i've seen it all and it's just one of those things like i feel like once you put it on the internet like 
people you just gotta you gotta suck it up now like I'll, I'll give this the example so let me i don't know if i'm just wording it right but this guy on the internet and this might be a stupid example but this guy posted what his sneakers were for the day right and i and i i always believe that like once you ask once you ask social media you're asking the world so like anybody <laughs> has the right to say something so he posted yeah. his he posted his kicks on twitter and he goes Yo, what y'all think about what I'm rocking today? And he put a question mark. And I said, now look, this, uh, I'm being a jerk. But I said, those suck. Now, <laughs> now I'm, am I being a jerk? I'm being a jerk. But then he responded with, yo, who asked you? I don't even know who you are. Why are you on my timeline? I said, fam, you did ask me. I said, you put a question. <laughs> you literally put on the World Wide Web and you asked a question with a question mark. You asked me. And he said, have a good day, sir. And I said, yeah. yo. <laughs> No, I mean, that's true. That's just like if I put on my Instagram, if I put the little poll up and I say, I don't know, um, y'all want to see a YouTube vlog? And I say, yes, I cannot get mad if 13 people say no. Yeah. So then, like, that's where I I have this issue with, like, with Kanye is that and I don't know if it's just because he doesn't have another outlet to go to. I wish he didn't put all the stuff that he put on Twitter and the internet, like because yeah. you open yourself up. Now, clearly, he, like you said, he could need some help, but man, like you make it, you give people the opportunity to go against you in a personal way and attack you in a way because you shared it with everybody. You didn't go to anybody who might view it as sympathetic. Like, I don't think Kanye thinks he has a problem. That's where I I'm lost. Like, I don't know what's up with him. Like, I I feel bad for him now for some reason. Like, I think he's a narcissist. I think he's all of the above. But like, I just kind of feel bad. Like, people have slowly, quickly forgotten how important and great he was. Now he's become like laughing stock. Yeah, I mean, him tweeting. He he doesn't tweet that often. For for him to tweet. Kim wanted to send a doctor to come get me yeah. like on the out. Like, what are you doing? I, ah, man, like, I, I'm asking you this too. You think it can, you know what's crazy? Even as crazy, like, people would view some of the stuff that he said as crazy and how erratic he's acted over the years. It just doesn't seem to have any effect on his brand. Do you think it might have reached that point now? Yeah, because you have a lot of, like, us. Uh, grown men with families who I'm not going to say, you know, black, but let's just say, yeah, maybe, maybe it is black, black, black. men with families who kind of see the stuff that he says about Harriet Tubman and maybe wearing the MAGA hat and, you know, all this and stuff. A lot of the people that wear his sneakers aren't us. Right. It's, uh, it's teenagers who, you know, parents are well off, you know, maybe white or other nationalities or whatever the case is. So his brand is going nowhere. And then you have the reselling, you know, aspect of it. Now I know he comes out with a new pair of shoes every other week, but if there's a exclusive pair or whatever the case is, like those shoes are going to sell. So you're going to have people buy them regardless. Yeah. I, you know, I seen what he was talking about. He'll leave gap and Adidas. If this and that doesn't happen or whatever. And, has any Gap clothes even come out yet? No, like nothing has even <laughs> happened yet. And it's just such a dangerous direction he's going. Like, I don't, I, mean, I don't even want to put it in the air. I'm not even going to speak of it. But I just don't want, because 2020 has been absolute whack. Okay? I mean, whack is an understatement. I do not want anything to happen to him. He makes me worry about him being around his kids. That's how I'll put it. Like, yeah, that clip of him saying I almost killed my daughter and crying and all that. Yeah. And then like how he was like, my kids won't pose nude and Playboy West. I was like, what? Like, I don't understand any of it. And it makes me and I've said this years ago. It all started really cult like ish. Like, it's yeah. really weird. And, and he's an influencer. Like, and there are people that are still riding with him, you know, and. I'm just like, okay, well, clearly you can't possibly take him serious as like anything political or nothing. Like, that's just not happening. But now I just feel like it's at this dangerous level of like, 
whatever but i i don't i can't tell yet like i can't check the temperature on whether it's going to hurt yeezys or like will people start being like yeah we're not buying these anymore i stopped buying them and sold all mine when he went with the maga stuff and it had nothing to do with him and i've said this many times it has nothing to do with him being a republican and riding with trump nothing to do with that it was just how much he tried to force it down and 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 I'm in, in black people's faces because black people yeah. wasn't riding with that. And it's like, fam, I get it. You like Trump. Thank you. You don't gotta keep telling me over and over. And it was like he was trying. I felt like he was trying to make other people feel like we're stupid because you don't see it. Like you don't see why Trump is great. And it was like, you know what? You've reached a level. Where I'm like, nah, I'm cool. And you know what? It's actually pretty easy to not buy Yeezys anymore. Like I haven't bought one don't have any i have that one size 12 that i had mentioned like a couple weeks ago because i bought it for a friend and then he started talking weird so it's just in my closet but i have none and it wasn't that hard to stop buying it you know and like i said man like i i genuinely am concerned with them i'm not gonna sit here and be like i'm praying for them i, I mean i pray for everybody like i you know i got my own stuff and my own family and stuff like that i i i wish them the best but man like it's get to a scary level yeah i got to commend you though with the yeezys because you stopped buying them i'm not going to say when they were at their peak but i mean there were some fire colorways coming out and you stood tall on it i mean you missed past the, the <laughs> 38 the 380s and the the azalea banks and all the you know hey, what i mean like hey, <laughs> let me tell you something there the azalea banks fam <laughs> there have been some absolute fire yeezys okay and yes. i almost went back on it like i they they were becoming so fire i had said you know what november 30th that's it i had enough i'm buying yeezys <laughs> again i don't care that's how fire they were i even started thinking maybe i should start buying them now and then then start wearing them november 30th like that's how fire they were but like you know what it was i think with so many sneakers that we buy now it kind of like i don't say liberated but it felt good to like drop off one of them you know what i mean it yeah. was like i still i mean i'm out here still buying air max air max ones and 97s and you know certain travises and you know certain adidas here and there and you know i'm venturing off into like more clothes and and hats now and stuff taking off one pressure thing made it easy it was like oh shoot the easies drop okay i don't gotta worry about that no more i get the email from adidas if the homies want them i'll try for them if the homies are like, yo i need them the mount zions whatever they're called that colorway <laughs> i need that oh cool i'll sign up for you like that's no big deal like i got you like yo just let me know like i tell all the homies anything you want me to sign up for a raffle for you that i don't want let me know like i 100 in fact i can attest to that um the, what's the the skunks 2.0s um yeah i did that for yeah like i i donkeys the the travis scott 270s you have been putting in work for me. Zero results, but you've been putting in work. <laughs> Yo, I put in so many for the Chunky Dunks. For you, like I, I thought like I was gonna get one of those. Like I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get one of these. Like locally, <laughs> I thought for certain. But you know, and like that's where I'm at. Like because it was that point to where it got to, and quarantine did that, where it was like, oh, I don't want these at all, but I'm gonna cop them to sell them, and make money. You know what? I am. It's, you know, I hate this is a stupid analogy, but like, you know, when like a professional athlete is like, let's say like for an athlete, they say, hey, we're going to give you one hundred eighty thousand for five years. And they'd be like, nah, I want two hundred thousand. I'd be thinking to myself, dang, how rich do you really need to be? <laughs> like, right. and, and and I get that like your value and worth you feel your worth and value and maybe you have other bigger plans but if they say 150 and you come back no 175 I'm like yeah. damn what's up man like yeah. and look Tom Brady and all them like I've always commended Tom Brady for like how he's done his contract stuff sports wise to help better his team and stuff like that because it's like I'm still rich how much richer do I really need to be when it came to sneakers i started thinking that like we're blessed we've talked about it during this podcast we're blessed to be able to buy certain things we have our limits on what we want to spend it on but if i really wanted to like buy something and say let's say i wanted to get jordan 5 off whites fam i go in my closet sell two pair of sneakers and buy them like, you know what i mean i right. could 
I could if I want to. I have trash right now. I have a ton of sneakers that I would consider trash. I could sell 10 of those for $25 and I'd be good. You know what I mean? Like sneakers that I can a size 12 easy that you're doing nothing with right now. Doing nothing <laughs> with, and I can get rid of it. And I tell people this all I used to do that a lot. People used to didn't understand why I sold sneakers for so cheap. I've sold Kobe 6 East to LA's for like $13. Dion's, I would just give them away. Damn. I would no, this is no joke. I would literally sell sneakers for $20, $40, $50, and I could easily get hundreds of dollars for them. But like, I didn't view it as why i'm at that point now i'm not gonna sit there george and everybody this morning were waiting for grateful dead bears i don't know if you were they dropped uh, they dropped on the bear website they were right. they, it tell it told you what number you were in line george was like number fourteen thousand in line like andy was like eleven thousand, and they waited <laughs> now you don't have to like you didn't have to leave the site open or whatever to wait in the line but i'm thinking to myself no, I don't want them. I would only be buying them to sell them. And right. it's not about my time, but it's like, you know what? No, I'm good. I'm not going to bother with it. If I were to open up something and it told me I'm 14,000 in line, no, I'm not. No, close this app. Close it all. That, I'm done. That goes back to the lazy thing. I'm telling you. And it's it's weird because I talk to my wife all the time. We could be in a store and I have something in my hand and we're, we're walking around and something could go wrong. I'm like, I'll just put it back. It, it's, a, it's a lazy thing when it comes to spending money. If it's not easy for me to spend the money, I'm not going to do it. Or like, let's say we're in a store and I, I got like three things and I, um, I find her and she's like, oh, I'm not going to get nothing. I'll put my three things back. I'm not going to wait in this long line. <laughs> I do go. that. Yo, let's go. No, I do that too all the time. I'll, I'll, I'll be like, yo, let me go. Let me go check the men's section out real quick. And I'll come back with a few things. And fam, exactly like you said. If she's like, nah, I was like, well, you'll have to do that jacket you was gonna buy. I'll put it back. Oh shoot, well let's get out of here then. I'm not <laughs> hey, yo, let's go. Yeah, I'm not no, I'm good. Like I was gonna only cop if you copped. Like I ain't exactly. I ain't tricking. Like I don't need I, that that bad. I didn't need these socks. Like <laughs> Yeah, let's go. You know what's crazy? It is it's always something like that too. I'll I'll check the men's section out of wherever we go. And it's like you come back with like, you know, a pack of undershirts and like some socks and maybe like you know, something you really don't need. And then right. I'd be, and I tell him, yo, she'd be like, oh, you can still buy them. You can still go ahead and get them. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, yeah. nah, I'm good. Let's get out of here. Yeah, like, I'm not about to that. wait another 15 minutes in this line for, for some socks. I don't need, <laughs> if you ain't getting nothing, we out. Let's go. That's a fact. Um, I'm trying to think if I got anything else to talk about. We really don't got nothing. You know, I'm glad you came on the podcast with me. There's a few other homies that, I got to get on the podcast. I get a lot of people like, oh, man, I got, I want to get on the show. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm, I'm trying to do my best, man. But a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to, like, talk like this way with somebody. That's why I'm glad me and George can always be in the studio with each other because people still ask because I split the screen on the podcast on YouTube. They, right. think, we're in a, they think we're in different rooms. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, you think we're, we're looking right at each other, like the same background, like. Oh no, you, you and George have some of the, the best chemistry that I've seen. I mean, because you think about debate shows and that's basically what y'all are. Y'all are debate podcasts. Yeah. Um, you look at Undisputed, First Take, y'all, y'all's chemistry. And it's probably because, you know, y'all are homies, friends, y'all been friends before the podcast and all that. It's it's beautiful to watch, listen to, because sometimes, you know, I like watching it on YouTube because I like seeing y'all ugly faces. But <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you know, uh, if I'm like driving to work or whatever, I'll, I'll throw on the podcast and listen to it. I mean, it's it's rare. And I, I salute y'all, man. Y'all do a great job at that. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I like just trying to keep it going, man. And that's the thing. You know, I always tell people, like, everybody who got YouTube and videos, like, man, just keep going. Like, there's a lot of people who stop doing stuff. And I'm like, man, just keep doing it, man. Like, get this stuff going. That's why, like, man, I, 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 me and you had a conversation about it. I was like, man, get the vlog. Do your stuff, man. Like, you be doing yeah. some interesting stuff, man. I'll be sitting at the house like, fam, I'm sitting here in my office working. Why is he swimming? I'm like, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm, Curtis. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's been a few times where I'm like, there's no way Curtis is doing this right now. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to figure out these Excel formulas on these spreadsheets, and he over there with a Truly in his hand, a, a Budweiser Spritz. 
and diving into the pool and got some yeah. like smoke coming out the grill. I'm like, well, what is going on? I'm like, are we living in a different time? Like a time? I was, like, I'd be like, yo, I can't look at this right now. I don't got time Man, to see Curtis. It's quarantine. It's quarantine. I told you. Look, I'm done just living my life, working, going to sleep, waking up, being miserable. Screw all that. I'm a, I'm a vlog when I can. Other than that, I'm gonna enjoy my life. I'm gonna take the fam out to the pool. I'm, I'm gonna do it up, man. You got oh, to. You, you know what? You know what? Me and you talked about buying a power washer. So I bought a power washer, right? Uh, you know, it's not as cracking as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I'm gonna tell you what I did, right? <laughs> I, I looked up some reviews, and I'm looking like power washers. Okay, I didn't buy the gas one. I bought an electric one. I did thinking too. Thinking the wave. Yeah. No, no. My house is too tall. Like, I, I power wash my back deck, the pool deck, you know, the sidewalk, whatever. There's no way I'm going to reach the top <laughs> of my house with this power washer that I bought. So that's it. I'm going to just pay somebody. Yeah. I, I, I don't can't. Know if it's money or what, but it's, it's <laughs> I can't do it because. So my brother in law has a gas one and he has one that, like, I'm talking gets graffiti off the wall. Like it can crack the cement. Like they right. you know, it's that one. And I was like, oh yeah, no, I don't need that one. And plus he was like, Yeah, you know, you got the gas and you gotta oil it up, you gotta do all that. And That's I'm like, much. Yeah, and I was like, No, nah, I don't need all that. You know, I just want to get the bird dookie off the ground and you know, right. hit the hit the windows, hit the hit the side of the house. You know, I ain't doing nothing major. Man, I got that joint, fam. I thought I was complete. I was so hyped. Cause I saw you had got yours and I was like, dang, yeah. Curtis already I was like, Curtis already got his, I gotta get mine now. I went and got that joint. I went out there, hit the bird dookie. It was cool. Got the electric cord everywhere. Got the yeah. the, the, the hose cord everywhere. Got a, I was like, man, I got all the dookie up and looked at the window the next morning. All the dookie was back. I was like, yo, what's up with this? I was like, man, forget this power washer. This power washing is whack. Huh? I was like, I got to put a... I was like, I need a biohazard suit to do this, too. I'm like, it be splashing anywhere. I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> Look, I went to Lowe's and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to get the 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 best. It was three models. I'm like, I'm going to get the, the highest one because this is going to do everything I need. Right. I open up the, the hose. I'm like, there's no way. There's no <laughs> way I'm going to reach what I need to reach. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to pay somebody. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm like, I'm just going to pay somebody to get these birds out of these trees. I got to figure out something. I can't do this. I'm like, I'm trying to wash the windows. That I got to switch the tips off of it. I'm moving the hose, the, the electrical cord. I'm trying to get the electrical cord wet, move the machine, move the hose, move this, everything tangled. I was like, man, I'm tripping. Dude. I'm like, this joint is just too much work. And then, like, what's crazy is, like, so with quarantine, I've been telling everybody, like, you could notice in our neighborhood. I don't know how it is on that side of the country, but, like, out here, when the when the streets are full of people, you know, every single day, nine to five, the wildlife and birds and everything, they really don't have much places to go. But since everybody has been inside, our neighborhood has, the trees are full of birds. Like, birds just chilling so they dookie in on everything i'm talking just the street itself got bird dookie on it so like listen, i went listen, outside when I tell you, go ahead no, go ahead go ahead no I, so like i go out there to like to shoot it all up out the driveway and off the bricks and off the like stuff man i stuff be splashing all on my legs and stuff i'm like Ugh. <laughs> i'm like you know forget that i'm like throw these socks throw these shoes in the trash i right? like I was heated and it stank. I was like, I thought I was really doing something. I bought like this cleaner, cement cleaner. So I went out there, hit the yes, hit the yes. hit the bird, hit the bird dookie with the cement cleaner. I'm like, yeah, this going this gonna burn it up. This gonna like, you know, begin the process for me. I let it sit for a minute. Then I go ahead and twist the bottle off. I put the I put the turbo nozzle on. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. Man, that stuff was splashing everywhere. Bird dookie air smelled like I mean it smelled <laughs> like a mechanic's palms. I was like, ew. I was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> oh, fam, look, it's like a when I say it's like a complete ecosystem over here. I got I got fire ants, I got lizards, I got uh, rabbits, snakes, oh, no. birds, What's hawks, like here? squirrels. It's in coyotes. <laughs> it's insane. Like uh, dragonflies, wasps, bees, bumblebees. And yellow jackets. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, see, we got we got all of those, but you don't see them as often as probably out there because we don't have a lot of trees. So like the scorpions, spiders, 
snakes, bees, wasp, hornets, all those, you see a lot. Coyotes, you'll see them running around the neighborhood sometimes, which will scare the crap out of you because you'll be like, what the heck? Rabbits, they just, they, they be dipping so fast, they be just underground all the time. But, man, it's just like, and flies, I don't know about out here, but flies this summer have been out of control. Yeah, I can't stand a fly. Fly is the one in the nat- Flies and mosquitoes. I cannot stand them two. No, I hate them. No, they've been bad out here this year. So. And I feel like it's because like no one's really out there. Pollution is like at an all time low out here. The sky is clear. <laughs> like birds and stuff are feeling good. We saw. I saw a dragonfly yesterday. First time I've ever seen a dragonfly in Arizona, and it was just crashing into our Arcadia door, and it kind of scared me because I was like, I haven't seen a dragonfly in so long. I was like. I was really trying to figure out why he was crashing into the window. It kind of scared me. And all the birds have been crashing into our windows, too. Like, that's how clear the sky is. Like, they just crashing into the house now. Fam, I got woken up last night or early this morning, 7.30 a.m. A bird flew into my basement window, had the alarm going crazy. Alarm that. going off, 880T calling me. I'm like, bro, what is going on? Like, I'm, I'm grabbing, <laughs> you know, the firearms, trying to, you know, take the fight, acting crazy. <laughs> Man, have sleep. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, nah, it's been it's been some crazy stuff going on. Uh, but I do appreciate you coming on here, man. So you want you want to do this top ten list? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do this list. Curtis and I are doing top ten lyricists to us. This isn't ever okay. This isn't top ten lyricists ever. Mine no, is. No. Hello? This is just, this is just to us because, okay. like I'm gonna say, I, I don't have Nas on my top ten at all. But for the culture and everything, I understand what Nas is to the culture. But he's not on my top ten list because I don't. When his music goes in my ears, it doesn't <laughs> resonate to me. See, I feel like that about J Cole, and that's fine. That's fine. I'm not gonna call your list trash, other than the, <laughs> the whole thing. But other than that, it's it's to you. You know what? Let me ask you this. Do you got Hove in top three? Yes. Oh, I mean, yes. I mean, eh. I know he you're is. top three already, dude. You probably you, do. You think Hove is top three lyricist? Yes. Not rapper. No, not no, no. Make not music. rapper. I'm going because he is a lyricist. If I was going off a rapper, I might mention someone like a Drake who has a melody and who can make hit songs. I don't, when I think of lyricist, I think of, okay, I'm driving two and a half hours. I got my Bluetooth connected. I'm listening to words. The beat don't even have to be that fire. I'm listening to what he's saying. Oh, see, you listen to music completely different than me then. See, if I'm driving, I can't listen to lyricist. I can't listen to it. Uh, I can't. That's what I I get my most, like inspiration for my uh instagram quotes see, instagram <laughs> see when i'm driving i need i need atlanta i need trap i need that oh, beat. You, you, young thug young jeezy yeah <laughs> i need i need that beat i need something that's gonna make me feel like different now if i'm like chilling with my airpods on or you know Doing something, oh, then I got lyrics on. You know, I, I got, like, stuff that I could really pay attention to. If I go for a walk, like, if I go for, like, a run through the neighborhood or I'm, like, just going through the neighborhood, just walking, I'll listen to some lyrics. Like, that's what I'll, 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 I'll do that. But, like, nah, like, at the gym, like, I used to try that. You'd be at the gym trying to listen to, like, you know, <laughs> trying to listen to some black thought at the gym. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, I can't listen it's to this. Stone. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I can't listen to this right now. I'm like, I need a, a I need a black suit on and a trench coat and a top hat. I need to post up, dude. I ain't got I'm trying to get buff. You know? Um so you got any honorable mentions? Yes, I do. Who you uh, got? Honorable mentions. I have Nas. <laughs> okay. Big Sean. Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't even think of Sean. Sean yes, is an underrated been, lyricist. Yes, you go back and listen to some of his, um, oh you know, some of his stuff. God. It, it's crazy. Hey, all you got to listen to is just Paradise and just listen yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, the Paradise, even if you listen to the album that he made with Janae, whatever it was called. Um, I, I don't know. What that the, it was a numbers. Something, I don't know. Yeah, fire. All right. That's a good one. And then the last one is Jadakiss. 
Uh, yeah, I don't have it in my top ten. But if I made like rapper list, I would probably have Kiss in it. Um, the the um the versus battle is what put him on my honorable mentions because I had honestly forgot anything that he ever did other than like the Y with Anthony Hamilton and like D Block, the D Block song. But right. when I watched that versus battle, he I mean the lyrics he to me beat Fabulous just off of I don't know if it was him performing maybe because he was drunk I don't know what it was but I. I think that us growing up, I think we liked Fabulous, him. We liked him so much and his style and stuff so much that we thought he was a good rapper. (laughs) (laughs) I do not care for, for Fab's music right now. Like, even if I go back to listen to the stuff that I thought I liked, I'm like, this is whack. (laughs) <laughs> I, I am not a fat I will always like Soul tapes and stuff are pretty good I will always check for his music I will always listen to it But I have never I, I don't think I've ever been a Fab fan I, I don't It's just not for me I don't like I would, it I wouldn't say a fan But you got some of the hits that you hear It's kind of like Ludacris Like he got a couple of good songs And you're like okay What? You don't like Ludacris? I like Ludacris But I wouldn't say I'm a fan of Ludacris Like Okay, maybe that might be right. I like, let's say out of, I don't know, 70 Ludacris songs he came out with, I might play five on repeat. Uh, I don't know. if I, Only one I could think of I play on repeat was What's Your Fantasy and Move, Pippin' All Over the Round. <laughs> <laughs> Pippin' All Over the World. I don't know. I, I love <laughs> I love Ludacris and all of them, but all that stuff to me ties into an era when we were at the club and, you know, baggy That's clothes. True. That's what I tie it to. Like, um, my honorable mentions, I got Stally. I love Stally. Oh, wow. Okay. I think he's very underrated. And I think he is. something about him just hasn't fully clicked with, like, the popularity that he should have. Like, he has he's his core. Wrong, he has the wrong, wrong label. Yeah, like I, I I like him a lot. Um, I have Wayne in it, but I'm taking Wayne off. Wayne is legendary to me. Like, I mean, I got Nas in my top ten. Wayne, the, here's the thing with Wayne. I think Wayne is one of the greatest rappers of all time. Period. Top three, top five, whatever you want to put him. I love Wayne, but when Wayne started getting too nasty with, ah, you know, I just, you know, <laughs> eating. Pu- I, look, man, I get it. Uh, like when Wayne and R and B music started getting too nasty, I'm like, yo, what happened to just singing? You know, the voice. And when they started talking about what they gonna do to you and lick, all right, okay, all right, I, I've had enough. All right, thank That's you. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I got Childish Gambino. No. Another one, yeah, that's a good one. People don't really pay attention to like his lyrics. I mean, he's really smart. He's really smart. Like I love his music. And then I have Kendrick in my honorable mentions. Should he be in my top ten? Maybe. Yes. Yes. Took- your li- your list better be fire because <laughs> you don't got Wayne, Hope, Kendrick. <laughs> See, Kendrick took me a while to really. I don't want to say get into, but like his voice, I could not get over his voice when he first came out. And no, no, when he first came out, I was putting people on the Kendrick. Like I was like, oh my god, this cat's up next. He's from the West Bars. I loved him. But then, like as he got more famous, his voice got more. It started sounding like Eminem. Like Eminem, and I was like, ah. Now, damn the album. That's what I was like. Oh, I'm mean, classic. Love it. Like. And, and I love well, Mad Kid. I love all of them, but his City. voice. I love it. I love them all. Maybe I should have put them on there. I might have been tripping. You definitely are tripping not to have kid. We're talking about lyricists. We're not talking about, you know, cadence actors <laughs> and all that. We're talking about lyricists. <sighs> he, Kendra, he got to be on there. Yeah, not on mine. I got better people. I got people you can't argue. Okay, we're going to see. Because if, uh, if, if it's arguable, I'm going to argue. <laughs> gonna... <laughs> right, I'm going to go first. Unless okay, you want to go, go first. I'll go first. All right. So I'm going to do all 10 right now. All right. So all right. 
Number 10, I got E40. Now, now, is E40 your traditional rapper? Absolutely not. But there has never been anybody with his his lingo, his rapping style, the stuff that he talks about and says, never. There never has. Ever. People listen to E40 because it's like, it's good music, you move to it. But if you pay attention to 40 Water, oh, man. 40 Water is one of my favorites. Uh, he's a top 10 rapper to me. Uh, I don't care what so, nobody so says. You like, you like Blueface music then? Curtis, Curtis, don't 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 be disrespectful like that. Uh, so you dude, like you like Silk the Shocker music then? Oh my God, Curtis, <laughs> do not compare E Forty to Blueface or Silk the Shocker. I'm not you like joking. Rappers though. who rap off beat. Curtis, <laughs> that's what you like. Curtis, do not Ooh, like. That's do what that. you like. <laughs> Curtis, do not do that. Uh, do not do that. You are wild. Silk the Shocker is easily one of the worst rappers in history, and Blueface is on his way. Do not do that to E40. Though. What's number nine, man? Because you, you, <laughs> man. Trash already. Oh my God. I did not. You did not ask me that. Yo, I'm you, you to... don't have E40 oh on your God. top 10 lyricist of all time. Oh my God. You no, did not okay. ask me. Coming from, coming from the East Coast. I don't know any E40 song. And I like E40. I like his music. I like Ghost Ride the Whip, Go Dumb, all that. I like it. It's, it's catchy. I cannot recite an E40 song beginning to end to save my life. I don't know what he's saying. Oh. Ooh, this, is, this is lyricist. So you know what he's saying then. So you can understand it. Man, yes. Sur- Element of Surprise, double album. One of the best albums ever. Oh my okay. gosh! This, so you okay? That's fine then, because that's to you. You know what he's saying. Um, E forty. I think of uh, the Trey songs uh, song. Just got to make it. I think he was on there. The Jamie Foxx song. You know that's that. Your list to you. Cool. I need you to listen to Element of Surprise. I need you to go through, find some time not, for yourself, and just listen gonna, to it. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> okay. Number nine. <laughs> Number nine. I got Big Boy from Outcast. I'm okay. Okay. S- okay. I'm, I'm sorry. People, people love talking about Andre three thousand, and Andre three thousand is so su- is superb. Not on my list. Superb. But Big Boy is overlooked as a rapper. Period. Wait a, wait um, a minute. Wait a minute. You old. have Big Boy, but you don't have Andre three thousand on your list. Do you? Are, see, by 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 you even having that tone about it, it makes it so disrespectful to Big Boy. Wait, I'm, no, no, I, that's it does. all I'm saying is Big Boy is a great lyricist, but w- that's like saying, do you follow wrestling? I mean, I used to. Okay, Matt Hardy over Jeff Hardy. That's what you're saying right now. Like, you cannot. Uh, okay. Why not? What are you doing? Andre 3000 is the better part of the duo. Like, he's the better lyricist. Look, no, Big Boy spoke to me. Nobody wants to hear a Big Boy album right now. Everyone's uh, looking for Andre 3000. They're no, 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 no. Where he's at? They want to hear. No. Uh, you see, feature. you know what? You why you you being mad disrespectful? Like Sir Lucius, Speaker Box, his version of the the double album, the Speaker Box. Okay, Andre Three Thousands was better. Oh my gosh! No, it wasn't. It was it was more popularized by the masses. It was not better than Speaker Box. It wasn't. Okay, so let, let's let's break away from that then. Who has the better lyrics? When you look at who's featured on, well, I don't even know if Big Boy's Big featured Boy, on anybody's verses. I've or never, songs. I have never looked at and listened to any Outcast. Outcast, I'm a huge fan. I have never listened to an Outcast album or Outcast songs or ever and thought, man, Andre's better than Big Boy this song or Big Boy's better than. They were equally fired. That's what you made them why Outcast. You're probably walking the neighborhood when you're listening to it or running around the neighborhood. You're not <laughs> listening to it I was driving, man. It's back when I had subwoofers and the bumping. Yeah. Don't, don't do yeah, that. Probably, li- listen to it with the tweeters high. No, you're no, not no, listening no. right. No, <laughs> no. Big Boy, Big Boy and Andre 3000, I'm sorry, on equal. You know why Andre 3000 was more interesting is because Andre 3000 was more interesting. 
him just okay. being as interesting. Okay, that made his lyrics better. No, it made his it made his it made you pay more attention to him because you were like, yo, look at this cat. This cat got a turban on and furry pants and spin bars. Andre three thousand. I mean, big boy looked just like us. Long shorts, stripes, colors, tipped hat. He looked like Atlanta. He looked just like us. But we looked at Andre like, look at this crazy person. Oh my God, he got bars. That's how we he treated got him. Neck. He got. <laughs> Clutch pants. <laughs> That's how we treated him. You know what's funny is? I bet a lot of people would have probably tried to say uh, J Electronica on a list like this, possibly, and they heard that album. I don't think anybody would feel that way anymore. Nah, probably not. Uh, number eight. I got Pusha T. Okay, I'm not mad at that. Pusha T, even when he was part of the clips, if you listen to the first clips album, I mean... The, the way they rapped about their gun and how they sold drugs, it made you feel like you was there. I mean, come on, man. And Daytona, yes. Daytona album is what was oh one of the best God. albums that year, period. Like, Santeria, oh my God. Like, don't even do it. Push a T. I feel like I should have had Push a T a little higher. I think I should have had him before this next one. Number seven, I got Rick Ross. Look. Your list is not that trash. <laughs> Other okay. than Ove not being on there, okay. you're not, <laughs> you're listening now, to that trash. Rick Ross, probably out of majority of these people we're talking about, makes better music, best beats, best songs, best composed music, and he's a really good rapper. And his storytelling is superb. Yes, like, yes. he his voice, the way voice, he come on a beat, cadence, ad libs, everything superb all right i love rick ross number six now here's one that people might be surprised by and i didn't throw her on here because i just felt like i needed a woman rapper i got queen latifah uh, look oh, oh man queen latifah that's, that's black queen latifah black rain is one of my favorite albums of all time People forget yeah. Queen Latifah used to rap. They look at her as an actress. She started singing. She started doing talk shows and other things. Queen Latifah had bars out of Jersey. She is a rapper. I encourage everybody who listens to this trash podcast to go listen to Black Rain. All right. It is undeniable fire. Number five. I got Prodigy. Damn. H and okay. I's H and I C might have changed my life. I feel like that album, besides all of the Mob Deep albums, which I still think Shook Ones and Shook Twos are the greatest rap songs of all time, next to Mini Men. Fam. You know what? Shook Ones and Mini Men, they're they're definitely in my top five. I don't know about one and two, but they're in my top five. Mini Men, I, I was listening to Get Rich or Die Trying the other week, and I mean I listened to it. Front to back, no skips. It's no a skips. perfect album. It was flawless, and I think people are really paying more attention to Mini Men now. With like um, Pop Smoke album had like the sample from the Mini Men. Like right. it was, and people are like you know what that Mini Men. Woo! When you listen to Mini Men, you hear it like "Wish Death Upon Me." Like oh, like the fam, way it starts. The way it starts. Like come on, man. Like. Man, yeah, that joint is fire. But I got Prodigy. I love, and I Quiet Storm might be one of the greatest hip hop beats of all time. Him and Havoc. I mean, Alchemist to make the beats. I mean, I used to love Mob Deep albums, but when Prodigy made his first solo album, H and I C, it was so good. I was like, oh my! I had no idea Prodigy was this good by himself. So good. Number four, I got Mos Def. Now I got Mos Def not on all the music he's made. It was one album that just, it was black on both sides. That was his first one. Damn, it had like Miss Fat Booty on it. It had other songs on it. We listened to that. I remember my friends had a Corolla. We went to basketball practice, basketball tournaments. We drove all over the state to play basketball. And that was the only CD we had in the car. We listened to that. That, I mean, bars, lyrics, composing of music, like, that album spoke to me. I sit in the backseat while the homies was driving. I used to be back there like, oh, my gosh, like, fire. Now, he hasn't really done a lot of good things to me after that, but, like, that made me feel something. That's what my list is. Lyricist that made me feel something. Like, they did something and had, like, a small part in my life. And Jay Z and would every, too. For everyone listening, I want you to understand that he does not have Jay Z, <sighs> Little Wayne, 
and they, they three thousand Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> they all have they all have parts of my lives too. That's why I felt bad making this list. Like I felt bad, but these are the ones who spoke to me. Number three, I got Nas. Fam. Nas, and this isn't to say by having Nas on the list that I think Nas is better than Jay Z, but I did always prefer Nas over Jay Z, rapping wise. That's as a rapper, that's understandable. A lot of people as a do. rapper, as a rapper, I thought he told made a lot of whack albums and had a lot of trash beats. But Nas's storytelling reigns supreme. You can't listen to you listen to one mic. You listen to fam, like stop it. Like, even when he was dissing Jay-Z on Ether, whether you like the song or not, you could see it all. Like, it was, Nas is a a storyteller. His voice, his tone, and even when he was in Belly, it was just like, Nas is God level. Like, I shouldn't even have him on this list. He should be right there with Jay-Z, Biggie, all them. Nas is, is... Nas is, is that guy. He's probably my favorite. Nah, he's my second favorite rapper of all time. My favorite rapper of all time is this next person. Number two, Ghostface Killer. I'm sorry. Ghostface Killer, Supreme Clientele, Theodore Tapes. I, I am a huge Wu-Tang fan, and I am a huge Ghostface fan. Ghostface, lyrics, bars, storytelling. Like, I mean, oh my goodness. I don't know if you're a Ghostface fan, but mm. I am, but not enough to put him on my top ten lyricist list. But I'm not mad at that. I'm not I mad mean, at that. Man, like he I respect can, Wu-Tang. He his 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 way to tell a story with his lyrics with the beat, it just works so well together. And number one, number one, my shark people. But I'm sorry, my number one is Jizza from Wu Tang. Jizza Liquid Swords. <laughs> Jizza Liquid Swords is one of the greatest albums of all time. To me and period. All right. I don't care what anybody says. That Jizza album is, I'm talking diamond, untouchable, worthy. You could put that album against anybody's album, and it's probably the greatest album in Wu Tang. Period. I don't care it, what anybody says. There's there's it, another Loso. Uh, shout out to my guy Los. He live in uh, DC. He live in your area. And the guy like he's he's huge into hip hop and, and lyrics and lyricists. I do want to hear his list on this as well. But like, oh my gosh, Jizza Liquid Swords is an album that I play every week, once every week. I figure out how to listen to something off of it. It is superb. That's my top lane. Top ten. I'm gonna go through one more time. Number ten. E-40, number nine, Big Boy, number eight, Pusha T, number seven, Rick Ross, number six, Queen Latifah, number five, Prodigy, number four, Moss Def, number three, Nas, number two, Ghostface Killer from the Wu-Tang, and number one, Jizza from the Wu-Tang. My list is fire. <sighs> my list <To> is you. <laughs> fire. Yeah, my list is fire. I know what your list is going to sound like. All right, list- all right, here we go. Number 10. Now, this is going to... Gonna- Make a lot of people like frown or look crazy, but the game. Yo, what's up? Now listen. Man? Are you okay? Now listen, listen. Look, I'm not it's... talking about G Unit. You know, oh, well, he was fired with G Unit. No. Talk on top after the G Unit days when he you know, got kicked out or whatever you want to call it. Listen to some of the game's albums. He is a lyricist. Oh no, no. Let me let me tell you something. Game. The game has never had a bad album, ever. The game is one of the best rappers ever to me. Love the game. I have never listened to his music and thought his lyrics are fire, though. Oh, you're not listening because you're running. You're, you're too busy trying to like, <laughs> get calories and all that. Trust me, drive to work or, you know, when when Corona's over and you're taking a vacation, <laughs> if you drive there, just listen to it. Trust me. Listen to it. Listen to it after you finish editing this. I promise you. It's I'm worth to listen to it. I, I look, I listen to his music and I think it's fire. I think he's one of the best rappers ever. All his albums are fire. I'm gonna pay more attention to his lyrics and see. Yes. Yeah, please. I feel like you might have one person on your list that I'm gonna feel bad that I didn't have on my list whatsoever. Absolutely. Now that you, now that you said the game. Because my list is fire. Number nine, Rick Ross. Can't argue. Uh, for the same reasons you said, Rick Ross to me, the way he <sighs> It's almost like I'm living 
vicariously through him. I've never been a you know a drug kingpin. Don't know if he's been, but the way he raps about it <laughs> <laughs> and, and that Miami lifestyle and the Carroll City cartel and oh and all, I just love it. <laughs> like, Dude, there there are rappers that make you feel like possibly doing those things. Yes, Jeezy, yeah. Jeezy, Pusha oh T, Rick Ross. They made me want to try. To, they made me feel like, man, selling cocaine just seems like the coolest <laughs> thing ever. Those right. three makes me feel like that. And 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 West Coast certain made you feel like you want to just be in the backyard, have your burner, your dickies, and do certain things as well. Like there's music that make you feel that way. Yes. All right. Number eight, Andre three thousand, not Big Boy. But why? What's your argument for Andre 3000? To me, what was that Andre 3000 verse where he was talking about the Boise State and the the turf being blue and not green? I mean, everybody got some dope flips and stuff, but like he has no album. <laughs> um, uh, what what was it the the one with Pimp C International Players Anthem or Oh, fire. Oh my god. Just okay. it's it's verses alone that make me, you know what? What he does puts him in my top 10. I mean, to me, I felt those verses more than I felt any big boy verse, any Wu-Tang verse, any, I don't know. So then no, so then, so then no, having no solo album is fine. I'm still waiting on it. (laughs) I honestly believe with quarantine, <clears throat> maybe he's working on it. I still have faith in an Andre 3000 album. I'm still waiting on it. You must be still waiting for Detox, too. Oh, uh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I almost put Ice Cube on my honorable mention list just because he wrote all of NWA's music. And I, I should have put him on my list. And I, I, I should have. Like, that's one that should have been on there. Like, I had him on my honorable mention, but I took him off because I'm like, you know what? It's not a what I think is best for hip hop as far as the lyricist. It's to me. And to me, I wasn't a huge NWA fan. I'm gonna be honest with you. I I've heard the classic albums, but I did my research on NWA after, you know, the movie came out. Right. And found, you know, the the quote unquote the B B side tape music. Right. And see, I didn't out all the music they put out. With Cube himself, I didn't care for Cube by himself a lot. NWA it was all of them. Like you needed all of them. Like right. I, I wasn't a huge Easy E fan whenever he would rap by himself. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't a huge Q fan when he rapped by himself. Like, uh, it, you know what I mean? Like, but they combined. It was like, okay, that's just the right amount of all of them I need. Like, right. Fine. All right, number seven, Pusha T. Good. There you go. The T is definitely. Um, the better of the two brothers, I guess they're twins or whatever. But like you said, the Daytona album, the verses of him going at Drake alone Just are good. like under not Drake was signed or about to sign to Adidas, and Pusha T ended all of that <laughs> with one song. Like people don't realize that. Like he named his son's name, he named who the baby mama was, he named a, a Drake's Adidas line was coming after the son's name. I mean, he named all that in one song. It's crazy. Pusha, Pusha T. It should be heralded way more than what he is in rap. Like he, he really should. Like, and it's really hard with the amount of music that's out there because if somebody would have stopped you on the road right now and said, "Who are your favorite lyricists?" You might not have would have thought of Pusha T right off the top of your head. And I, I no, feel like the only reason my top ten is because I had time to think about it. Yeah, that's that, and I, and I feel like that way too because I I love Pusha T, but it wouldn't have been because I didn't think so, it would because I just forgot. I had time to really think about it. And, and and FYI, our lists are pretty identical. Just to give you a heads that's up, why I, told you, I told you our li- your list is pretty. Other than the whole thing, your yeah. list is kind of fire. Yeah, but see, like you got E forty, I got the game. Somebody would probably a lot of people would probably say we're both crazy on both of those. You got big boy. I, mean, I got big boy. You got three thousand. Like we're and you got Ross push. It. We're in the same realm so far. Now this is where it gets crazy. Number six, <laughs> I got Kendrick. Yeah, I, I, you can't argue it. 
I mean, Kendrick has bars, lyrics. I I love them, but like, you know what? I made a mistake. I should have put him in my ten. You should have. You should put Hov on there too. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Okay. Number five, I got J Cole. That's one that like, that's Born Center album. I thought was remarkable. But J. Cole is one of those people music going one way and right out the other with me. Like Now see, that's how I feel about Nas. Now you're gonna think I'm crazy. I think that J. Cole makes better music than Nas did. Oh, of course. Tons of people do. Okay, okay. Do you agree with that? Oh yeah, 100 percent Like Nas okay. didn't make good music. Like if it wasn't for Nas being Nas, he would he he could be considered whack. Like okay. His, okay. his his choice Thank of beats. And his organization of albums have always been bad. Like, thank you, thank you, bad. And a lot of the Nas songs that we thought were super trash then, you listen to them now, you're like, okay, I can see where he was going now, and you could argue maybe he was ahead of his time. But no, J Cole makes way better music and album than than Nas. That's that's the period. thing. I, I I grew up. I live south of the Mason Dixon line, so to me, you know, Subway, Tim's, hoodie. New York fitted, super big, brim low, right? Like cold outside, like on the corner. I didn't relate to that. You know what right. I mean? Like I didn't relate. To, you know, rats as big as a, a cat. Like I didn't relate to the way Nas rapped. Right. But Hove. I don't know if it's Hove. Maybe going a little bit of pop or what it is. But That's to me, I related. Is. I related more to Hove's music than to Nas's music. I want to hear where you got hold at. What's next? All right, number four. And I'm surprised you didn't have him on here. I don't know. Maybe you had like a brain lapse. Eminem. I've never liked Eminem, though. Look, I bought all his albums growing up, and I think I tried to make myself think I liked Eminem. I can't re- I, Eminem is... Can he rap? Of course he can. Is he one of the greatest people with the ability to rap? Of course he is. But I have never cared for his like his tone, his cadence, his structure of his like. <sighs> you know, I can't even get mad at that because I don't have Nas on my list. And I know people are looking at me like I'm crazy. Nas is, Nas is one of the top lyricists of all time, but this is a to me list. And to me, when I heard Eminem talk about how he chopped up his baby mama with a butter knife and he described the, the opening the trunk and putting her in there and See, greatest, all this stuff. Greatest storyteller of all time? Uh, Maybe. He made it, me visualize it. Exactly. And that's what you need from a lyricist. Somebody, the same reason you liked, um, who'd you say you could visualize? Nas. Really? The same way you could visualize Nas saying all that stuff. I can visualize Eminem literally driving down the street, drunk, high on pills, like with somebody in the trunk of the car, wrapped up with some rope. Yeah. I can see it. And his run, you can deny, you cannot deny his run he had from what, 2000 to what, 2008-ish? Eminem is a, Eminem is a legend. Okay. Facts. Facts. He's probably at God status too, which is why like, I hate when he still raps now because it's like, you don't need yeah, to. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't, don't have to. Don't do that. Don't ruin. Just don't do it. Like, right. Yeah. Now you, you're, you're solidified. You, you're yeah. good. You don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> number three. Number three. Lil Wayne. <laughs> I'm not going to argue Wayne. with it. Lil Wayne might be... Uh, I guess this kind of coincides. He's in my top three favorite rappers yes. of all time. Yes, top three, top five, easily. Not even a question. I would never argue it. I'm not even argue with him being number three or in your list. You're right, but that's fair. Lil Wayne was like this block of era, which was one of the greatest runs in block of eras of hip hop history. Yes, but but what? you can look at you can look at any rapper on our list that same way. Wu Tang had a block of era. Rizzo's not. I mean, you didn't even have Rizzo on your list. Hey, Who'd you Jizza. have? Jizza. Uh, if he, what, what's going yeah. on with him now? Nothing. Like, yeah, but like, are you really checking for Wayne now? I'm not. Um, I, I listen to funeral. I'll, I'll download it on Apple Music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, 
Even though, like, I listen to Funeral, and Wayne still has all the ability in the world, lyrics, everything, the rap, but it's it's dated now. Like, it is. It is. It's like, because Wayne... And that's his fault. That's his fault. He doesn't listen to music. So if he only listens to himself, he doesn't know how to keep up with the time. So he's still rapping like it's 2010. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, when I listen to, when I think of Wayne, I think of, like, that Wayne T-Pain era that, like, oh, my gosh. Like, there was just, you know, it was just such a great era, you know, in my life. You know, going to the club, young adult, you know, trying to get girls, you know, all this stuff. You know, you be playing it, mixtapes. You couldn't wait for a new Wayne mixtape to drop. You yeah, know, droughts. Drop all of them. Yeah. Three. And right now, when I listen to Wayne, I'm like, oh, man, that was dope. He still got it. But mm, you know what? I, I don't – there's just certain things I don't have a lot of replay value with. You like Drake's music? I think Drake makes some of the best music ever, but I don't go back and replay it. Like, I don't listen to Drake's music over and over and no. over. No. When I hear it, like, I listen to the album, like, two, three times, like, oh, my gosh, this is fire. That's it. I don't go back to it. Now, if I'm out at the club or if I get it somebody else whip or if it just comes on and I hear it, oh, this is the jam. I love this. But I don't be like, yo, let me put some Drake on today. Never. So so you get in the car. Let's say you're driving somewhere. What Never do you put on, on on your phone? Uh, I actually just – I mean I download a ton of stuff and I just push the shuffle button on Apple okay. Okay. and listen to it. But honestly, this is going to sound whack, but I mean – I'm, it's kind of faded away now, but I'm a real. I love ASAP Rocky music. I, I mean, do. nothing. Nothing you're gonna say is whack. I mean, look, I listen to country music. Okay, so I mean, you're not. But I, late, I'll get in the car and throw that on on shuffle. So you know, I listen, what it is. I listen to a lot of podcasts now, but like when I have listened to music, like I've been listening to a lot of like Anita Baker, James Brown. Like, I just been like, yeah, ain't wrong with that. Yeah, I just been like listening to like really feel good music. I found myself listening to like uh, LL Cool J '90s and like uh, Mariah Carey stuff, and right, you know, right. I, I did a Jada run after the verses. You know, like I just been kind of just have a feel in it. Like I really don't have anything that like, oh man, I'm getting in the whip to listen to the like I listen to the like little baby. I listen to all that stuff, but like. You know, it's just the mood with me. Like, I, li- I listen to somebody. I don't know who you know. You know who Black Fortune is? Nah, I never heard of that. Heard you gotta listen to it. It's, like, it's called like Oosh Rock or something. I think he's from New York. I don't know, but I just love his music. It sounds wild sometimes, but it's some good stuff. Katrina, look up Oosh Rock. Oosh Rock. Katrina, you'd be like, yo, this beat is wild. <laughs> like, it's dope. What else you got? All right, number two Biggie. I mean, sure. I mean, what do you now, want to say? <laughs> I don't even say much about Biggie. Like, when it comes to all-time rappers, obviously, I well, not obviously, but I, I have Pac above Biggie uh, just because when you think about raps and songs, Pac made more songs that were, I guess, kind of relatable. Biggie rapping about the Ten Crack Commandments and all that. But when it comes to lyrics, he's number two to me. Um, you know, if I did, if we did favorite rappers list, Biggie and Pac would be in my bottom five. Like, they. Biggie, well, that's the difference between favorite and top. Because if we if it was top. favorite, then Nas wouldn't be nowhere near. But if it's top, Nas would have to be in my top ten. You but know if what? It's favorite, he's not even an honorable mention. Then you have then then it would have to be figured out how to answer the question because. Top rapper and favorite rapper, I don't know if I would have like what qualifies as a top rapper. Biggie and Tupac both died at what twenty six, like Somewhere do we area. do we really feel like? And this is not to be disrespectful because their musics are classics, their albums are classic, legendary, two of the greatest rappers of all time. But like, is it longevity? And not to and it sucks that their longevity was cut short due to violence. But like. Man, you wouldn't put Snoop in your top three? Now, here's the, here's the difference. Now, not to be disrespectful to Pop Smoke and, you know, all the fans and everybody right. for his music, um, but I would never put, you know, obviously he died. 
he was supposed to turn 21 here recently. Yeah, like um, yesterday. I wouldn't just because he passed away at an early age. I I don't necessarily consider him a great. Um, now Pop yeah. had well, he put out more albums than Big B. Only had the two, uh, and the second yeah. one came out after he already died. But when I go back and listen to those albums it just moves me like it's maybe it's the bad boy and the diddy and the beats and the way he wrote the beat and yeah, you know diddy era. and the school music and all that stuff i don't know what it is but to me it's era it is still like it's it's amazing you know it is and it, it makes you a feeling and like those are some of the last musics and albums where like you know all the words like you juicy right. you know all the words to them so like yeah i mean it, it just all depends like I always feel crazy when people don't have Snoop in their top five rappers. I'd be like, wait a minute, you don't got Snoop in your top five rappers? Like I don't I think Cameron is a better rapper than Snoop. Um, I'm sorry, what? Cameron Cam- Cameron Dipset <laughs> Jewel Zantana Dan oh, Jones. Right. Okay. That, that Cameron. All right, okay. What what's your number one so we can get out of here because you you talking crazy now. Oh. Sean Carter, Hove, Jay Z, number one, and that's to me, perfectly Jay-Z fine. Jay Z is the number the, one lyricist. Jay Z uh, is the greatest rapper of all time, ever. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Ever. Period. Thank now, you. lyrical wise, I never was like, ooh, 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 I never was for him. And I think oh. it was because of what you said. He went really popular. It was a lot of the Pharrell. When he went really super Pharrell, super Timberland and stuff for like this large block of time, yeah. even the, I didn't, uh, the 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 Bun B, the Big Pimpin, you know yeah. that whole era, like because it's sort of like that block of like the Pharrells, the Timberlands, Beat, um, even maybe some Dr. Dre. I think Beats for Jay Z. That block of time sort of reminded me of like the Atlanta era, like. Oh, like the snapping music? <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't care too much of what Jay-Z was saying, but the beats were so fire. I mean, you put right. on some, you put some, like, you know, change clothes. You put on some Big Pimp, and you just, you just bouncing. Oh, my God, Big Pimp come in the club. You just, mm, mm, mm. You just bouncing in the club. Now, you know all the lyrics. I know all of Pimp C parts. I know all of their parts word for word, but it was the beat. It was the move. Um... Allure, when Allure would come on, Blue Magic, it was like, mm, like you just grew to it. But I wasn't like, oh, them bars, like, oh, like you know I what was- I want you to do? Not, not necessarily tonight, but at some point this week, I want you to go back and listen to the Black album, one of the greatest yeah. albums ever. Yeah, I mean, and j- listen to the lyrics though. Don't go running. I want you to sit down, <laughs> Indian style, no, Native American style, in the corner. <laughs> he switched it. <laughs> and and listen to it, <laughs> okay? You're right. I'm gonna have to give me a notepad too. I'm gonna give me like a com- composition book and just write them down. I'm telling you because it's amazing. <laughs> I'll see. What's your <laughs> list again? Go ahead and go through it real quick. All right, my list: number ten, The Game; number nine, Rick Ross; number eight, Andre Three Thousand; number seven, Pusha T. Number six, Kendrick Lamar. Number five, J. Cole. Number four, Eminem. Number three, Lil Wayne. Number two, Biggie. Number one, Hov. Mm. Fire list. Can't argue it. Fire. You definitely can't argue your top three. Arguing the top three is is, is quite disrespectful to hip hop. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Anybody? You don't even have any of my top three on your list, period. Uh, you're right. But... You didn't even mention my top three. I did. I said little way honorable mention and I brought up Jay Z and Biggie in the beginning. I said they're gods. They're kings. Like they're not come on. But, but you got Nas and Boo Boo the Fool on your list. Like I don't even understand. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, Curtis. I'm about to get out of here. This podcast is three hours long, though. Wow, that's crazy. It's a good long one, man. I appreciate it. the conversation was good. It was just home two homies talking. I appreciate you know you making time for me, man. I know you got your family and stuff, and it's way later there than it is here. So oh, yeah, it's almost ten o'clock over here, man. Oh man, you better get get with it then. So I'm gonna let you go. I'm about to go put this bed together so I can see get some good rest. Podcast episode will probably be on all audio platforms tonight, but video in a couple days, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, look, I appreciate you having me on, man. And look, I like I said earlier, I appreciate what you 
and George are doing. Um, y'all are goats at what y'all do, man. Damn. Honestly. Damn, we made the top 10 podcast lyricists of all time. <laughs> 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 all right, Curtis, I appreciate it, man. I'll hit you up later. All right, man. All right, later. Have a good one. Oh, I appreciate everybody who likes, subscribe, comments to the podcast. Look, I know some like the the closet episodes, some don't, but you know what? George Ben out. I didn't feel like going to the studio today. I'm at home with my family. Uh probably do, maybe depending on when George comes back. I don't know. We'll see. I got a couple homies that are waiting right now to do this episode podcast with me in the closet. Appreciate everybody who likes, subscribe. Uh that's it. That's think this pow, 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 pow. I have two cameras in here. So if I looked weird at one and not at the other, I don't know. I'm giving it something a shot. Shout out to everybody who listens. Like, subscribe. Pow, 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 pow.